Welcome, everybody, to the Loose But Complete podcast. Happy hump day to you. So glad to see you all in the chat. All 30 of you, please hit that like button. I am your host, Laser Pants, also known as Ryan. I am joined, as also as always, by this little fella right here. I'm Mr. Jeremy, a.k.a. Authority Figure. What's going on? Good evening, Ryan. Good evening, chat. How does this you... day find you, sir? <laughs> it finds me fine. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> what was that? I, I'm, I'm all hopped up on, on cough and cold medicine. Uh, but the, the wee baby Jeffrey uh, brought home something from daycare, and then uh, he wasn't feeling very well. And then I was kind of holding him and, and talking to him, and he decided to, to cough directly into my mouth. Right, just that right happens. there. Oh, so, yeah. So I have. I'm not at a hundred percent. Right. Uh, so if I'm if I'm not if you're not doubling over right in laughter from my hilarity, which you usually do, I'm I, I'm sorry, but I, I'm here for all of you. We're gonna make this work. Okay. No. He coughed directly into your mouth. Right, right, right in there. Right in there. Have has it happened yet? When changing the diaper, the cold air hits. Oh, and it's stream straight to yeah, your face. Yeah, right. And then Old Faithful. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right in the face with that one. So, it's a um, thing. yeah, it's a thing. I've I've been urinated on. Um, I've been vomited on. Uh, and now I've had just you know a very very Ooh. deep cough with with spittle. Mm. You know, just like right right in the mouth. So, Good yeah. Times. Uh, yeah. Ten ten out of ten recommend. Ten out of ten yeah. recommend. It's been great. Well, we are not alone tonight. We've got a guest. Just In one. fact, we've got, we've got two guests, as a matter of fact. <laughs> For those that didn't notice the uh, the thumbnail, who better to talk to about the movie industry than the world famous, the world class bullshitter himself? Jeff Hicks. What's up, man? Hey, hey, everybody. Thanks for having me, guys. I got to say that is a hell of an intro. And uh, even though I haven't had a child yet, I understand what it's like to get puked on quite a bit. So I, uh, <laughs> uh, I party life, man, it happens. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> right. you got drunk friends. We, yeah, we know what it's like. Yeah. yeah the, I mean, I dated this girl. Dude, I dated this girl in uh, college. The first night we ever went out, she puked on my leg and we dated for a year. So it was, I guess, a good sign. She's a keeper. <laughs> no, she okay. wasn't, but hey, no, it was okay. a fun year. <laughs> All right. Um, like I said, two guests tonight. So who else better to join us than the one, the only, the man that's on camera now, Two Cent Toys himself, Salvator. Hello. Also, IRL Squidward. I saw that. <laughs> I have the, yes. You will play Squidward in the uh, live action SpongeBob. Ow. Oh. <laughs> that's pretty good. So, so, so not only is Sal now showing his face, but uh, he also... When he sent me a package, um, he, he put his real name on the box. So, Sal, if you don't want me to dox you, I need you to send me $500 on the first of every month. Uh, or yeah, else that sounds about right. I'm going to make it public. So That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Did your box like, play music? <laughs> it was vibrating. It was weird. I don't know what was going on in there. Dude, he sent me one when, it opened, when I opened it. It started to play Axel F. So that was the coolest <laughs> package I ever got in the mail. I still have that, by That's the awesome. way. Everything Hell you yeah. ever sent. I kept in a special place back in Ohio. Hell yeah. <laughs> There's these things you can get, like the, the birthday cards that you open that play music. Apparently, oh, I, it's not apparent. It's a, it's a thing. But you can get them to where you can put your own message or something onto it. So I just, just clipped that and put that on it. So it opened the same way a birthday card doesn't play at Axel F. It was cool as hell. <laughs> it's interesting. That's a catchy ass song. I remember trying to record Axel F off the radio. On my four-track tape cassette recorder, holding holding the cassette player up to my parents' stereo, <laughs> trying to start it right when the song started on the radio, like 1987, probably. That that one is catchy, but do you know what my favorite tune is right now? Hmm. Figures, 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 <laughs> figures, 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 hmm. figures, figures. Yeah. Ryan, you're so cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was a, a great video today from Articulated Ninja. Uh, what the hell was that? You drinking beer? Me? Yeah, you. Well, the one that just drank a beer. Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, you should be drinking whiskey. You're sick. <laughs> <clears throat> I, 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 I used to, but the thing is, is that like, 
I, 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 I'm bad with hard alcohol, right? Not that like I have a problem, right? But then like, it's just like by the time it hits me, I'm already too far down the path. You, you know what I mean? And so just gotcha. like, yeah, I got it. It's over with. Right, right. And they have to put it down and go to bed. So. Hmm. All right. Well, we are taking a bit of a going to the left on that fork in the road, right? Yeah. We're usually staying to the right with toys. Tonight, we're going to be talking about movies. Right. Are we seeing the decline of the superhero movie? What's the last good superhero movie that came out that you were excited to see and went and saw? <clears throat> mm, either, I think it was probably The Batman. If that came out before, the no, okay. if that came out before No Way Home. Otherwise, mixed it was reception. No Way it came out after No Way Home. Okay, mm-hmm. then The Batman. Bit of a mixed reception. Um, Those Jeremy? people are wrong. Uh, the, the last, the last Cape shit movie that I was really interested in was probably Hancock. Um, uh, no, I'm, I, I'm joking. <laughs> Could have went with Unbreakable, right? That's another, that's another deep cut right there, right? It's a better um, movie. So yeah, for sure. No, I, so the, the last one that I was really like, Hey, we, we have to see this. We, we got to go opening weekend, uh, was, uh, in game. That was the last time I was really excited mm. for, for something. What about you, Jeff? No way home. Okay, so I wasn't like super. I was looking forward to that one. I guess I'll say that because I, I was excited to see Doctor Strange though because I do like Sam Raimi, and uh, I thought that movie was better than people give it credit for. It's not as good as other Marvel movies, but like that was. I'll give that one. I was excited. Anything else, I was not pumped for. I dreaded going to see Ant Man. Hmm. All right. Yeah, for me it was probably No Way Home, but. We're going to be talking movies tonight, superhero movies, video game movies, what's happening with movies, a lot of movie stuff, Uh, but we're still going to start off the show talking about new toys we've added to our collections. Uh, Jeff, you're our guest. How about you? All right. So since I've never been on this show, let me just show you my whole collection, but no, joking aside, one thing I have put away, I'm not going to pull out because it's underneath this printer. I did get that Mezco 89 Batman, the little whatever one that everyone goes nuts for. Or not Mezco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was Mezco. But Mezco. you brought up Spider-Man No Way Home. I do have this right here, the uh, <sighs> SH Figure Arts Tobey Maguire. And it's not that great. I sent you that really? video. Mm. Um, it looks wonderful. Like, it is a great sculpt. The details on point. The paint is on mine is pretty much flawless. Excuse the sound because I'll actually just show it on camera. I don't like the construction of this toy. I think the engineering of it is iffy. I think Figure Arts has gone a little downhill. But again, like I said, it's a beautiful figure. It's got great detail, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of articulation. But it's got like a diaper looking build. Uh, And like, does he have butt cheeks? Yeah. He's got butt cheeks. Mm. And so mm. the the thing that bothers me is this is a really nice toy, but in 2002, I got a toy that wasn't that much worse than this one for $7. I compared this to the original Tobey Maguire figure from the first Spider-Man movie, and, like, I get it. It's a, It was a mass-produced toy, and this is a high-end collectible, but this isn't a big enough jump for me to be like, wow, I'm so glad I bought it. Like, I got the Mafex Spider-Man figures, all those in there, those are worth the money, in my opinion. Yeah. They're a better build. They're slightly bigger. Whatever they're made of feels nicer, and they hold their poses. The paint's tighter, all that mm-hmm. stuff. So, you know, that is what it is. But I also well, do you have... You, you're okay. making me feel better about passing on that Toby Spider-Man because I, just, well, I watched Spider-Criminal's review of it, and I was like, mm-hmm. dang, I should have got it. But now that one's I better. hear... Yeah. This is the only Spider-Man you need. This is it. Honestly, <laughs> honestly that is the best one ever made. Mm-hmm. I, I have I two just, of them now. I I just I don't get the thong. Uh, J- Jeff, can can you can you show that again? Yeah, no problem. The figure arts. Yeah, let, let's see that backside. Cheeks, let's let's you know. yeah. I just oh, man. <laughs> and these move. Yeah, this is the weird part. The butt cheeks move. Right, right. I mean, that's, I so, you this get, that's so you can get the leg to move actually back. Which is nice. Okay, like there it is yeah. going backwards. But like, okay, there's. I'm not going to pull it out because it would make too much noise, but, like, honestly, the engineering versus the Mafex isn't, like, any much better. Like, I'll give the Marvel Legends, they have this, like, weird diaper thing that they put on all their superheroes now, (laughs) but it looks more realistic. Like, Wolverine looks like a dude in a pair of trunks. Cyclops, his legs kind of sit there like a real guy in the trunks. So 
the, the main thing I'm going to tell you, man, and uh, Laser Pants, what you'll want to know is when I get the three pack from Hasbro, you know, the one that's got all the f- different Spider Man, I'll compare that because that was $90 for three figures, and this was yeah. $94 for this one. I'm not saying it's going to be comparable, but I bet you that one isn't that much off because there's one source you're copying from. Right. I mean, how, how different can you veer from literally the same thing? And they've kind of mastered this piece of toy and, you know, toy form before, so. And if you're patient, yeah. Mafex always gets to it, right? It, it just takes, like, another year or two, maybe. <laughs> so. Look, I I caught the bug, okay? Spider-Man No Way Home. I was, what was I, 14 when the first Spider-Man came out, 13 years old. So I was in the theater. I heard the music. I got jazzed. I saw Tobey Maguire, and I opened my wallet. I bought this. I bought the three-pack. I got the mm-hmm. hot toy on pre-order. If there's a Tobey Maguire toy coming out, this guy's going to have it. Just, like, mm-hmm. the next thing I'm going to show in a second. These Indiana nice. Jones figures. Uh, yep. I, I'll uh... be. I'll try to be more positive, but like this, what you see on the box is not what you get in the box. Like this render of Indiana Jones actually looks like Harrison Ford, and then you get the real toy, and it looks like just no, shitty. No. It, it, it kind of no. looks like my selfie series a little bit. Uh, to be honest with <laughs> you, look it's how like t- super look glossy. How tiny the Oh, it's dude, tiny. it's super glossy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think if they would, in, instead of those renders, if they would actually do, like, like fig photography, right, um, and, and, and put that on there, I think it would go, uh, I don't know, I guess more acceptable. But I, I know we're talking movies tonight and, and everything, but it looks like they're going back to, to plastic with the packaging and everything. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of whatever. But notice when a company makes a change that quick, like any kind of marketing change, if you hear about it for a while and then after it changes, they're like, we're going back quickly. They messed up and they, that's basically their way of trying to say they're sorry. Dude, the first Hasbro figure I got in the new windowless packaging was messed up and I swore off the X-Men VHS series after that. So I think enough people scared them because this is unacceptable to get stuff that looks unfinished in your hand. Well, you yeah. know, Jeff, I just I made the assumption that Hasbro had 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 saved enough plastic to actually like like save our world. And so like mm-hmm. once they had saved enough, like it, it, it's done now, you know, we, we're good. There, there's no more, uh, you know, global crisis anymore. They've done their part is what you're saying. Yeah, they've, they've done their part. Right. They and actually think they was a collector. They hate the earth now. Right. <laughs> we're so anti-earth now like... i think it would, it would be truly poetic if they got the license for a captain planet and started <laughs> making those would you buy another captain planet figure i have the original oh, one. a 100 if, fucking percent if mafex did it yep would you or, like the whole team uh, uh-huh. See, I what, I, that. what i want is i want captain planet and then i know that the heart kid is going to be the peg warmer because what the fuck is heart Mateen, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really want them to do Captain Planet and then do like some kind of con exclusive of the, of the Don Cheadle Captain Planet. Yes, <laughs> that's that Turn Don Cheadle head. That 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 has Ace from Ramen Toy written all over it, right? Mm-hmm. That would be the man to bring us the Don Cheadle head. <laughs> Don't It'll call me again. Too. You just you gotta sculpt paint. a flat top on a roadie figure and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's probably a super easy like 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 DIY custom, you know. <laughs> All right, I need to build cool. something like that. Was that all your pickups, Jeff? I mean, just I got Indian Tote, and like I said, Mezco gotcha. Batman, but I can't pull that out because it's all put away. So, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. Well, hold on one more thing. I'll just show you this. Okay, um, right on. <laughs> I did get this giant box from Big Bad Toy Store all at once, Ooh. and it had a uh, Ghost Rider, and nice. it had... Oh, I got that damn... Um, I got Wonder Man, and I got Wolverine, but I got the new... Um, extremist iron man that is a bad iron man figure it's like they sucked the color out of it It, the joints are kind of frozen and they didn't paint the eyes on mine so it just looks like a five dollar figure that they just put in a box there's like no paint on it whatsoever i was highly disappointed he he, he's too thin his legs are too skinny to be a man in armor yeah i compared it to the other iron man figures and it just it's just not even worth a damn. I don't want to sound like I'm the guy that comes on your show and complains about everything. But no, just, I do that. It's kind of like a bunch of stuff that was like, oh, this is terrible. Oh, look, like we get we get accused of complaining about toys enough, Jeff. I don't need you coming here and bringing that negativity to this channel. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not. Yeah, I, I had a I had a I had a middle aged pedo on Facebook tell me that 
this show is all about bashing toy companies and other YouTubers. And I was like, excuse me, not all toy companies. <laughs> just mm -hmm. just the ones them. that deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> well, what was uh, what was this guy's response? Uh, mostly, it was like kind of like some -hur -hur, like pretty much that was it. His, oh, uh, oh yeah. So like for the mug shot. Like like <laughs> yeah. lowercase letter, uppercase, lowercase, yeah. uppercase. Oh, no, no. You know, he uh, went back to the elementary school and started sniffing the bicycle seats again. Oh so, man. Yeah. <laughs> he, hit, he hit Ryan with the old anyway, I'm rubbing your glue. <laughs> Sal, Mr. Yes. Sal, would you well you're selling everything. What'd you sell this week, Sal? Um nothing, actually. Oh okay. uh, it's been kind of a dry week. Uh the most recent pickup I have is the uh Jack specific Metroid. So which uh, I was talking to Ryan about. I thought that they were just like reissuing stuff, but these are actually slightly bigger because the Former Jax. Come here, you little bitch. Um, <laughs> so, Metroid Prime Samus, you know, they've updated the colors and all that. And she's actually bigger. Like, she's in a crouch position, so they're a little bit taller. Much better articulation. They gave her butterfly joints and all that. Didn't give her any bicep swivels, so that's the closest you're going to get to her grabbing her hand cannon. Oh, that but sucks. Still, like, Looks good, though. Above. The sculpt looks good. Yeah, way, way, way better. What do so, those run a piece? Ten bucks. Oh, that's it. Ten bucks, Walmart. Ja Jack Pacific is pretty. Uh, it, it, as far as value for your dollar is concerned, I'm I'm impressed with Jacks and, and what they're doing with these uh, these Nintendo lines, right? They, yeah. They've got uh, they're doing a a Link um, and Princess Zelda that both have accessories that are nine ninety nine. Uh, those Mario figures are articulated with an accessory as well. Yep, there, there you go. Yep. Um, for for ten bucks, I think it's great. Hey, Smith yeah, I mean, the Crow wants to know how tall Samus is. Like, as the character or this? The figure. Boy, the figure? Oh. Um, <laughs> Just spit off some stats real quick, Sal. We She's know, seven feet yeah. tall. We She's know that she right. knows. Isn't it like a yeah. five-inch line? Five-inch-ish uh, still? Five-inch. Yeah, like 5.5, five, five inch. Um, gotcha. you know, five inch adjacent. DC. So, Sans head. This is the Lex Luthor DC thing. So, they're about five and a half inches. Five inches, okay. roughly, um, compared to the old Samus, which I think was four inches, so a little bit smaller. But I think they're great. So nice. especially like because these were originally ten dollars, so they've upped the size, increased the articulation, and better paint, and kept the price the same. So I think it's great. I'm gonna build a collection of those. Those are nice looking. Yeah, they're I have really... like the old Link. Yeah, mm -hmm. the um. This link that they've just put out with the sword is way better than any link that they've put out. Because um, he always has like a really hard skirt and you can't, or tunic, I guess, you can't bend his legs and all that shit. But he's double elbows, double knees, it's all pinned, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because they do a good job of blending the color. Like you can't really tell that there's pins unless you're looking for them. Right. So, but yeah, that's all I picked up. Uh, I haven't really sold anything. Um, I'm not saying I'm taking a break from selling things, but I'm not pushing as hard because I had a big influx of stuff to get rid of. And I was like, that's, that's... I had people like Ryan waiting a minute for me to send stuff out. So <laughs> I get a little bit of a breather at the moment. So yeah. waiting really until I go on vacation in a couple of weeks. That way I have time to go to the post office and send stuff out. So sure. but if you're interested, you know, I am selling a lot of stuff. So, but, uh, my advice is don't hit me up and ask if I'm selling something because I probably am. But, you know, people are like, well, are you selling X? Can you be specific? Like, are you selling Spider-Man? Oh, I thought they wanted to go to a rave. Are you selling <laughs> X? <laughs> so, but yeah, there's, you know, I've had a couple of people reach out and they always ask for shit that I'm not selling. Just like the one thing, like, oh, of course you ask about that, that like the, the big Spider-Man. I'm not selling the big Spider-Man. That, that, yeah, that, don't sell that, that was, one. That was me, Sal. I was the guy looking for that one thing that you didn't have. <laughs> yeah. What an idiot. Is that Iron Man on sale behind you? <laughs> Which one? The big one? Oh, I'm just joking. I just saw the, I was just like, is that Iron Man? Yeah. Hey, it, hey, uh, hey, what's what? is like 10 inch ones. Yeah, well, yeah, what's up with those. what's up with that lamp, dude? You trying to move that? Like, what's up? This lamp right here. Yeah, this one right yeah, here? yeah. Tell me about the uh, the, the Pixar uh, figure you got right there. Yeah. 
from the show. <laughs> <the> lamp, Jeremy. <laughs> <Think so? Yeah. laughs> you, you should you should make a sales post saying Pixar figure lamp. Um, one to one scale Pixar lamp. Yeah, one 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 scale, one of a kind as well. We're never gonna right. find this again. Just uh, say right. screen used. Hell yeah. <laughs> What's screen screen used? It doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, Jeremy. What about you? What'd you get this week? So I got a couple of pickups. Hey, I just wanted to address something um, in the chat right now. N nothing sure. negative. Uh, there was a comment from uh, Power Turtle Buster figure reviews that was talking about that completely unhinged person um, and, and your DMs and, and praising Hasbro. Look, I praise Hasbro as well, right? When 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 they do something good, I give them credit for it, right? So I am I am guilty of that as well, right? This isn't this is not an anti Hasbro. Uh, or, or Mattel channel, but when there's flaws in yes, something, yes, it is. Yeah, yes, it, it is. That's why no, I buy no. so much of it. Yeah, I, I know. That's why, like, <laughs> there's an entire like every GI Joe classified bad guy like but behind me, you know. So look, when they're doing stuff that's great, that's fantastic, and I'll be more than happy to give them credit. But if there's something that I don't think I really got my dollars worth for, then then I'm gonna say something about it. So anyway. Just wanted to, to get that off my chest. So speaking of these trash Hasbro products, right? I'll never buy stuff. Um, here is, uh, oh, <laughs> I got Outback, uh, right? Uh, had to get rid of that that uh, that rifle he came with. Um, yeah, wasn't wasn't really digging that. But overall, this is I think it's a cool figure. Uh, great uh, homage to to the original. Um, but I swapped out the weapon he had with. Uh, it came with that. Um, Cobra Viper uh, three pack, right? That uh, the weapon with the uh, kind of like the, the ACOG uh, scope on top and the grenade launcher. So uh, really, really happy with that. Another one of my favorites from when I was a kid. So had to grab that. And then I, I, I broke my rule, right? Um, people who have been following the show for a long time know that my rule for G.I. Joe Classified was I'm going to rebuild the collection I had as a kid just in this modern new six inch scale. Um, and then the rule got modified to where I was going to recreate the collection that all of my friends used to play with when we get together. Right. So Joe's that they had that I liked, but I didn't have myself. Um, and then I just completely threw the rule uh, out the window. So uh, cover girl here, uh, Joan rivers. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Picked her up. I, I, I'm, I'm digging it. Uh, I, I'm digging it. I I like the figure. I wish that the the joints were a little um, tighter. I, I guess because I'm having a knee issue with, with her uh, right out of the box. But um, you know she she stands just fine. I, I posed her up and everything. So uh, the the shotgun is cool. It's like a it's like a modified Benelli M4. Um, the the one that uh, John Wick was using in in uh, John Wick three. Uh, so that's cool. I just, you know, she's got the wrench, but nothing to work on yet. So maybe, maybe the next HasLab will get, uh, we'll get a vehicle for her to tinker with. Well, it's funny you should mention HasLab because that wrench is specifically to work on the Sentinel's knees. Uh, <laughs> my nap, map, my nap, map. Uh, so... <laughs> we got your two-year-old jokes. <laughs> yeah. So I, I really like that. The only other thing that I picked up uh, was a Secret of the Ooze shredder that went directly to Bobby because I didn't need it. Uh, evidently there's a, there's a scarcity of them. And uh, the town that I live in is, is completely owned by me as far as collecting is concerned. Nobody else, you know, has, uh, is doing it whatsoever. So I've had two on the pegs for a long time. And then, uh, so when Bobby said he needed one, I reached out, said, you know, grabbed it and uh, sent it to him. So, cool. and that's, that's that for, for me. I got this uh, Marvel select apocalypse. Oh, I want that. Man, for 30 bucks, you get a lot of figure. You get like three different of these hand attachments. You get the claw, the drill, and then uh, like the spiked mace. And then you get two extra, or actually four extra hands, two open hands, two fist hands. For 30 bucks. And this thing is like mm. 10 inches tall. Right. Yeah, he's a big one. I, I don't care what anyone says. I love that head sculpt. I see mm. a lot of people saying too. they don't like it. I love this head sculpt. I think it's great. Um, so Marvel Select is killing it. With their figures, except I also Captain got Captain America. Except that one. That, I don't <laughs> like that one either. They hey, 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 Ryan! I got to drop out for a second. I'll be back in just okay. a few. Yeah, get out. <laughs> <laughs> how how dare you? Yeah, me. There you go. <laughs> and then I got um, <laughs> I got this uh, totally not leather head or leather neck. What, what's he head. called? 
totally not Leatherhead Alligator Man from uh, 5K Toys, which is this thing is crazy. Actually, no, yeah. I got it from BBTS. It was mm -hmm. in my pile of loot for a while. Um, I saw a review of this on Mad Hatter's channel, and I was like, okay, let me get that thing. Uh, so that's cool. And they're, they're doing a bunch of animals. They're going to be doing like like shark guys like this. Mm -hmm. They kind of look like modern the street sharks. sharks. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Like a hammerhead guy and a great white. And so I kind of want to have like a, a team of, you know, predatory sea dwellers, mm -hmm. but in human shapes, kind of. Yeah. That's, uh, cool. I would pre order through a big bed because there was, going back to the Infinity Equation days, there was a 1 9 scale Venom that 5K Toys had up for pre-order, and I pre-ordered it when it was available. Never got produced, no updates. I've sent them email after email like, hey, is this thing coming? And they're like, it hasn't been made yet. I'm like, it's been like five years. And You are uh, hosed. Yeah, so I was like, just cancel my pre-order, and I never even got a confirmation about that. So it might Jeez, show up man. one day. So You didn't even get to cancel it? No, I, I just sent them an email saying cancel. Like, I had to do an NRD, but I was like, whatever. Uh, or, uh, yeah, none, yeah, NRD. And uh, never even got a confirmation if they canceled it or not. So, oh, well. Fuck it. And then I got, like, the most hype figure ever, it seems like. But I think it lives up to the hype. And that's the Jada Toys Ryu from Street Fighter. Um mm -hmm. I was going to get that whole line based if these are decent looking. So, yeah, what do you I'm think? Get that line. Yep. Yeah. I love Street Fighter, and I don't want to pay 90 bucks for the figure arts or whatever. Storm those. Collectibles. Dude, Storm Collectible, I bought their Mortal Kombat stuff. I got it on, I think it was you, Sal, that sent me a link uh, mm -hmm. to like a Black Friday sale, and I picked up everything they had. They're nice, but they're not like $120 nice, in my opinion. Yeah. So, I yeah, got this just... thing. I got this thing in the mail today, which I have not opened oh, yet. I got to wait like eight months for mine because I got it from Big Bad <laughs> Toy Store. So, you know, yeah. it's going to take... The movie will be out on DVD by the time I get mine. Mm -hmm. Probably. Um, I haven't so, opened it yet, but I'll give my thoughts on the next show. Are you going to paint uh, the cockpit? Yes, I'm going to have to because I, I, I've seen out-of-the-box images. And I'm it's, like, ooh, that looks ugly. Do me a favor. When you do, just tell me, like, can you just send me what you buy or what to use to do it? Because I have to do it because... I'm like you. I'm a purist. It's got to look like the movie. So, and I've never done this before. I've never had to do cosmetic work on a toy. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably just use a, a flat black acrylic paint. I'll tape off the windows. Um, I'll sand it a little bit on the cockpit, not the body. I think the body's going to be too thin to sand, but I'll, I'll sand the cockpit a little bit. Use a flat black acrylic, and then um, use a clear clear coat, uh, dull coat, and then probably some silver dry brushing. And then another layer of dull coat. <laughs> Gonna even add a little yeah. weathering. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then, I, so me and my wife's uh, 18th anniversary was last weekend. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I was not expecting this. Um, total mind blower. So it, it was in a, she had it wrapped, but it was in a, in a cardboard box and the shipping label looked familiar, mm. but the sender was ripped off. And so I open it. And I'm like, an Action Force figure? I have them all in, like, triplicate, right? At least. <laughs> and then I pull it out. Oh, and it's a man. prototype Pandora. Bobby signed it, and it's one of one. God bless. And I've never, like, cried over a toy, but I came close <laughs> on this one, man. I was like, one That's of awesome. one. So what she did... Well, she reached out to Bobby and was like, hey, I need to get him something for our anniversary. I don't know what toy to get him because he buys everything anyway. And I guess Bobby was like, I got you covered. I'm going to send you something. And it was this. So thank you so much, both of you. Um, this is amazing to have something that's one of one. Um, never something that I thought I'd ever have in my collection. But um, So we're doing it as a giveaway. Right now, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hell no. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. So thank you. Um, that's, that's top class. I wasn't expecting this guy to show up, but we have actually another guest. Uh, welcome, articulated ninju. Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? How are we doing tonight? Oh, the theme song. Articulated ninju. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How are we doing? 
What, uh, what's up, Articulated Ninja? How are you? I'm, I'm pretty good. I was actually hoping that Jeremy would be on the stream tonight. He called me up and this man was mad. He was heated at me. This guy is hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. He, he He's saw, not. He, he saw a video where someone was drop testing Valiverse weapons on the concrete and decided to do the same experiment, but with NECA figures. So this guy, he, he calls me up. He's all kinds of heated with me, saying he, he busted a whole bunch of Rambos. That are worth a bunch of money so but you know I, I didn't know what to tell this guy so i was hoping to see him on stream tonight but evidently he's he, he's not here so yeah he had to, he had to dip out um he had something really stupid he wanted to do apparently yeah, I so. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I, I guess uh I'm, I'm gonna catch you guys later i'm gonna try to catch up with jeremy like i said he's my favorite person on the internet right now um oh. so so hey you guys have a great stream okay Okay, thank you. Articulated ninju. I feel like um I, I feel like I I'm gonna get a phone call in a minute here. I, I gotta say, in terms of ninjas, there's articulated ninja, parappa the rappa, <laughs> and then that guy. Hold on, there's there's articulated ninja, mm -hmm. parappa the rapper, fifty feet of shit, <laughs> and then that guy. I I'm pretty sure Chris Farley's Beverly Hills ninja is in there like somewhere. Yeah, he's like he, he's actually like S tier. He's at the very yeah. upper yeah. echelon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Jeremy's going to be coming back tonight. I don't know where he's at. I don't know what's going on. But, um, oh, geez. Oh, there he is. Hey, where you been? You just missed articulated ninju. Yeah. Oh, did, I missed him? You missed him. I've been trying to call him, right? I got a hold of him earlier today. He said he is not liable for my neck of figures hitting the ground, despite his scientific test he was doing with Valiverse weapons. So, yeah, I've got a little bit of a bone to pick with that guy, honestly. Hold on. I, I, I'm getting a signal. And, um... Oh, it's Articulated Ninja. Okay. He's got something he wants to say to you, Jeremy. He does not like that bit. He does not think it's funny. <laughs> I'm going to patch him through. I'm going to yeah, patch him yeah. through. Patch him on through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more time. Tell Jeremy one more time. Okay. <laughs> nah, dang. Wow. Oh my god. I'd watch your back. He's an articulated ninja. Uh, yeah. You never shout know. out to articulated ninja. We love ninja on this channel, right? Oh, I found out what this song is from. My kid has been watching My Hero Academia. I got him Crunchyroll. And oh, now I know what that oh. song is from. I'm like, oh, it's a, it's a My Hero Academia. Okay. I get it now. Um, I would have assumed like Mega Man 7 or something. No, yeah, well, that's the 8-bit version. My, my oh, only okay. connection to My Hero Academia was uh, watching the, the figures peg warm at uh, GameStop for forever. It's Academia. I oh, I, I could. Okay. Yeah. It's Listeners Japanese. send me this all the time. Really? I've yet to read these, but I have, I think I have like the first 20 books. Maybe I'll like it. Hmm. Is it, oh. it, it, and that's a, that's what's called a, a, a mango. Um, a mango. Yes. yes. It's a delicious. Not to be fruit. confused with the peaches, 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 peaches. peaches. It's a, and you read those from, from right to left, right? You don't read them at all. That's the, that's the catch. Yeah. Just, just mm. stack them on a bookshelf and let's say, look at all this stuff I have. The only two ways I can read anything are left to right and then Star Wars scroll. So top to bottom, I can't do the, the other, the other way around. Well, right, can listen, you read this the army we are Superman, the movie it comes in like, whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we are 35 minutes into our show. Oh we Jesus. Have touched, we have not touched <laughs> the main topic yet. However, <laughs> however, I'm getting a signal, Jeremy. In my ear. I hear that. I hear that coming from the head office. Uh, we have to go to our news desk with Sam Newsman. Broadcasting live on Wednesday, April 19th in the year 2023. The Claw Machine, a popular arcade game at Carnival's theme parks and the entrance of Walmart, was invented in 1893, yet was not released to the public until 1926. Over time, the machines became more elaborate with some being adorned in pure gold to attract high-valued customers to play. However, in the 1950s, legislation was passed that listed claw machines as a gambling violation, and the government 
began closing down the machines in mass, with only a few remaining in hotels and in remote places. In the 1980s, the claw machine began to break away from government restrictions and became a staple at local pizza huts. Which leads us to our story. Someone recently became stuck in a claw machine for 17 minutes in Charlotte, North Carolina. When the 13-year-old teenage boy was finally freed and asked why he decided to climb into the machine, he stated it was easier to win. Have you ever won a prize with a floppy claw? Touche, she replied. From the most trusted puppet in media, reporting since Roswell, I'm Sam Newsman. Listen, I'm but, out of the gate. I'm just going to say, as we get older, I think floppy claw is really a problem. You know what I mean? We all yeah. deal with it. There's no shame in it. Especially <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so th thank you, our reporter in the field, Sam Newsman. Thank you for that 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 breaking story. Uh, back, back to you, Ryan. So we're going to get into our main topic here, the decline of superhero movies. However, first, we got a bunch of super chats I want to get to. First one from the Canuck. Thank you, Canuck. Thank God Jeremy is here. Why do we have to put up with laser depends? Can we get some real talent in here? Sick and tired of the usual lame hosts. Thank you, Canuck. We got one from Mr. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Wonderful. He says, just a what's good and say thanks for the weekly entertainment. Counting down the days until AWOC game double J. Thank you. Th thank you, sir. There's uh, there's some big news on, on the horizon coming very soon as far as that that game is concerned. So uh, stay stay tuned. I, 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 I want to break it, but I, I, I can't. So, uh, yeah, but it, it's going to be really, really cool. Right on. Thank you, Mr. Wonderful. Uh, we got one from our buddy Tony Robles. The six inch indie isn't bad, but the gridiron kit brings almost all the greatness to the top. Always great to see Sal and Jeff rock on. Thank you, Tony. Yep, I haven't awesome. seen the gridiron kit. I haven't seen it. I gotta look that up myself. Yeah, I have. It was in Michael's video. He didn't get it, but he showed pictures of it. Oh, now. that's like, right. That's right. Yeah. He did show. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. was that. Was that a? Um, no, that wasn't a Patreon video, was it? No, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Um, K Dog Broadcasting. Who else thinks there's a Smash Brothers movie brewing on the heels of Mars success? Absolutely. And we are going to get to that. Yeah, I have some thoughts uh, about that. Well, we'll get to that later. Don't say anything right. yet. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Articulated Chad. Super Chad. What up? What's up, Chad? Thank you so much for the Super Chat. <laughs> yeah, Articulated Chud uh, over here. Thanks for the money, was... sucker. <laughs> thought it was Chode. <laughs> 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 oh, articulated Chad, I got a blue core. Here's four ninety nine. Yeah. No. And then we got uh This is Chode. <laughs> There's Chode. <laughs> Barely articulated Chode. Northern Nomad, thank you so much. He comes in with the emotional damage. <laughs> so much, Mr. Nomad. Okay. So we mentioned it earlier. We're I, I, personally, I think we are coming to the end of the massive superhero box office domination. I don't know if there's anything they can do to own it again, like they did, you know, 2005 through like 2019, 2018. Right. I think it's going the way of the Western, personally. But, um, Jeff, I would love to hear your thoughts on. Mm -hmm. Because you cover movies mainly on your channel, World Class Bullshitters. Link in description below. Um, but you mainly cover movies and pop culture on your channel. Where do you think it's going? This, like, the superhero massive... It's like the Western, right? It's like... Yeah. Well, I feel like you. The way you set that up is it's it's not what it used to be. And it's, it's a multitude of different reasons, really. First off, we're in this Marvel decline. Like, when Phase 4 started right after the Avengers ended, it's just been a lesser and lesser movie. You know, there was a collective interest in superhero movies for the entire MCU run. I mean, from 08 to 2018, or 19, people were on board with these never-ending stories. Each movie added something new. And then Marvel just kind of lost that. It fell in on itself. It stopped being must-see entertainment. And I don't think people moved away as much as the movies just don't live up to what they're trying to do anymore. After the big story of Endgame was told, 
we've had a few decent ones, but mostly they've kind of sucked. And I'll be even honest, and I know this isn't fun for some people, but DC hasn't had a great success in over a decade. I mean, I think the back Joker, which is separate from the Zack Snyder verse, but the DCEU that they created, or yeah, EU that they created back in Man of Steel days, that has just been miss after miss after miss after miss. But Marvel had been so great that it's just, you know, it kind of fixed that. But I'm with you. I think superhero movies are more of a chore these days. You've seen all the good heroes, and now they're bringing out the B list. Nobody likes uh, who's the B list they're putting out. It's like nobody wants a Robin movie. We all want to watch Batman to, to mm-hmm. flip, flip the brands. And that's what Marvel's given us. It's sidekicks. You know, sadly, Chadwick Boseman passed away, so we have Wakanda Forever, which no one really cares about that because it's Shuri, uh, and they ruined the sub As I refer to it, side character, the movie. Exactly. It's in, Look, the action figures do not move on store shelves. You can go check out our channel. You talk about the pop culture stuff. We definitely do the pop culture uh, toys, too, because it's a response to a bad movie. That's why merchandise sits on the shelf for a year or two. People don't buy it. They don't like the characters. And it's just been what it's been for years now. The pandemic isn't an excuse. It's just bad decision after bad movie after bad choice. And there's nothing to get excited for. Maybe Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will be amazing. But if that one's great, what's next? The Marvels. What's from DC next? The Flash. Stuff that people aren't necessarily the most excited for. And what is the selling point of The Flash? Not The Flash. Michael Keaton Batman. So these movies are just, they're not even being able to be sold on their own name anymore. It's how can we get you into the theater with a gimmick? And every movie needs one. So I think they're in a really bad place. And I don't foresee this really correcting itself because... What are they going to do? Bring out another Spider-Man in a couple years? All right, people will go see that one. But Spider-Man works no matter what. Even when Andrew Garfield was Spider-Man, for as crappy as those movies were, they still made hundreds of millions of dollars. So only Spider-Man has that built-in brand loyalty. And I'd say Batman. You'll always see a Batman and Spider-Man movie come out no matter what. They're, They're forever. Superman's not forever. Other things aren't forever. So it is what it is. Jeremy? I, <laughs> I would disagree about Big Blue, sir. Um, I, I, I think that it, me personally, my, okay, my personal opinion is that as far as superheroes are concerned, I believe him to be the, the most iconic. Um, that there isn't anybody that doesn't know what that S symbol is, right? Fair. Um, you could, if there's, you know, probably 12 years ago, right? If you were to take, I don't know, let, let's, um, let's 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 say tony T- tony stark's right re- reactor right if you were to show that to someone 10 years ago right they wouldn't know what that was right but everybody knows what what the, what the the s is right um mm-hmm. and as far as like i'm concerned tony stark and iron man what was a b-list character uh yeah. that that was brought to to the forefront See. so oh yeah uh, yeah yeah p- possibly and so i think that you can do b-listers right you can do sidekicks if they're to do something with raw uh robin based off of that chuck dixon run chef's kiss right that that was a that was really really good stuff in, in, but, in my but, opinion but a, a a good movie does not necessarily mean box office success um yeah and and, and that's very true that's very true um that's if you look too. at the case of dragon heart uh and other other films <laughs> uh like <laughs> like that uh but like i i think it can be done uh, if, if it's done well but just like everything else is you have to do it well um, with like phase four Marvel stuff, you can dump 700, 800 million dollars into a money or uh, money into a movie, you know, including the, the marketing budget and everything. But if it feels like it was directed by 17 fucking different people, uh, then you're not going to connect with, with any one. Exactly. Now, the only re- one thing I do want to say to you is I, I agree with you on your Superman points hundred percent. I do think though that Superman appeals to a slightly older generation and that we don't, and I don't think we realize that Spider-Man is like way more popular around the world too, because Spider-Man oddly blends into like that anime crossover and every Mm -hmm. part of the world. I really do believe that him being a fully covered character makes him more globally appealing. And it's nothing to do with race or anything. It's just Spider-Man works in other markets, like in Japan, the Sentai show that came out, what, 45, 50 years ago, that helped influence an entire generation of the Sentai. And then even another thing, look down in Mexico, Spider-Man looks kind of like a Lucha guy. He fits in with every part 
of the world. And then look at the movies. I mean, there's a reason why they can make a Spider-Man movie about a hundred different Spider-Mans. You could never do one that's literally like every different Superman. There's like, yeah, there's a couple dozen of them, but it's like, oh, he's got a beard. Oh, he's got gray in his temples. Oh, his logo has black instead of red whatever but spider-man you got 55 65 100 different versions and so i do think just that character is is has got a brighter future than superman and i love superman superman is one of my favorites too i was just reading spider-man versus superman this morning uh the second appearance or the second issue not the first one where they fight lex luthor and doc ock anyway i digress (laughs) sorry i I think you know superman could be a billion dollar franchise again but they have to stop being so shy of the Christopher Reeve movies. And I know Superman Returns was a big flub. Like, it, you know, but I think with Superman, he is the big blue Boy Scout. You have to keep that feeling that you got with Christopher Reeve. You saw him and you felt hope. Here's, you felt- here's, here's what I say, right? Let's let's get rid of dark, sneering, brooding Superman, right? Let's hit the saturation knob, turn the color up, right? Let's get a little... Yeah. Jose Garcia Lopez in there, right? Ooh, good and then, and then, right, right. I mean, well, I mean, pro- pro- prolific uh, artist. You know, the the Jose Garcia Lopez DC style guide was, you know, that that's I my era Superman, right? Super friends, superpowers, all that is my. I era. studied all that stuff for art. Believe me, I'm a huge nut for that. Did you know they still hire him to do merchandising? Like when you go out and see like Justice League, the Doritos and all that. That's still him, right? right. And, I'm happy and, that it is. And, and they should be right. I think the I think the reason that they're failing right now, as far as the box office is concerned, is because you do have these subject matter experts that are still out there. They said, "Hey, look, I took this to the next level while I was on it." Right? X Men is another example. Chris Claremont is still fucking alive. Uh, you can get, mm-hmm. and he was the most prolific uh, X Men writer of all time. Was it seventeen years um, on that story? I believe. Like 17 yeah. years, Chris Claremont was on it, right? So if there is a subject matter expert in existence, I would, I, if I was a betting man, I'd say it's him, right? So how about we get a screenplay from him? So Before yeah. we get too far into X Men, though, I, I do want to bring up Melinda's comment. Um, she said they got to stop hating the character. He's a good guy, right? Exactly. Yeah. Superman's a good guy. He he yeah. he is all encompassing good. Um, do you think? And, it's and that doesn't have the... to. Go ahead. Oh no, I was going to ask a completely. You say make your point, and then I'll ask the question. Uh, no, go right ahead. I, I was going to say, do you think it has to do with the climate of America, to be honest with you? Because, like, yes. Superman is truth, justice, in the American way. And, like, the character represents a lot that those who make movies don't really yes. support or put out there. I really think yep. that's the yep. reason why Superman yep. will, unless Hollywood all of a sudden, like, something happens and we're all pro-America again, I don't think Superman takes off anymore. And yep. I and I want it to. That's, That's the thing. Point. I want the Christopher Reeve era Superman. I want the bright color. I want the John Williams theme. I want him to fly around with the flag. I mean, it, he's yep. an American product. It's not a. It's not like it's a global character. He really is an American character. He's, but it, for some he, reason, we just don't want to glorify that on screen. And so he, I think they rectify that. Then Superman will, you know, fly again. So, uh, to it, it, kind of ties into the point I was going to make. It they're focused on a global market instead of an American box office which I, I get it. Like you can make more money globally than you can in America. But I feel like tying that into the Chris Claremont and all the other artists and all that, I, 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 I channel my Charlie day from always sunny, like me money, me money needing a lot now. <laughs> like That's think, what it is. Like I they're not you're about to pay, crack a can of cat food, right? Um, they're not going to pay those people because they can pay some college intern or not intern, but they can pay some new college graduate who doesn't understand the market and what stuff's worth. They can pay them pennies to churn out shit and still make the same amount of money. So well, I, it's sad I think true. Hollywood also, when it comes to Superman, I know we're spending a lot of time on Superman, but... As we should. They, um, he's, the, okay. he's the granddaddy of them all. They get so he's focused on, on, on the success of Batman and the character of Batman that I feel like they try to turn Superman into Batman. And Superman is not Batman. He's not the dark, brooding, sad, for you know, forlorn, foreboding character. He's bright. He smiles. He, you know, he's happy. He he has a positive outlook. He's an optimist, right? Yeah. Um, and they haven't done that since. Uh, you can make an argument for Brandon Rouse's film, but they haven't mm-hmm. done that since um, for, since Christopher Reeve. 
I would argue that the last time they had a successful, like, and I'm using air quotes in Superman to make my point. I think the last, like, really successful Superman anything they've had was Smallville with Tom Welling. And yeah, he wasn't yeah. even Superman yeah. until that very last episode. And so, I, I would say you got, like, like half that series was good. <laughs> right. I would I'd want to throw yeah. that in there. I, I think you're being a little bit generous, uh, generous there, uh, Mr. Yeah. Pantalones de Laser. Um, mm-hmm. I would say about like forty five percent of that was was okay, but look, you know, I, I'm 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 a Superman simp. I'm a Superman Mark, right? So I watched every episode, and and I and I ate it up, uh, ignoring all of the flaws, just because I got something that that was Superman, right? So, um, uh, K Dog, I gotta say I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I like Henry Cavill quite a bit. I'm upset yeah, that they took him out of the equation for. James Gunn's movie. I just don't like the movies he was in, but I think he was a great mm-hmm. Superman. If they if he would have had a good script and a better director, mm-hmm. then I think he would have been perfect. Well, you, you say better director. Zack Snyder is is, is great at, at what he does. This was a mismatch for him, right? Okay, okay. There, they, there was no reason to hire him for this right and but I, I, I want to say i also want to say i don't even hate the snyder movies I, right. but that's not my justice league that's not my dc it's a right. take maybe it's the injustice uh video game version of the justice league almost it ain't right. mine like uh, my ideal is go ahead what no i was gonna say that's that's a really great comparison yeah if you think yeah. about the the injustice uh you know games in there in, in the comics and stuff it, it feels very similar to that you know i never thought about that which is a good way to tie it to video games. <laughs> we talk about Superman yep. Returns on uh, Xbox 360 because that was well, yeah. that was a we fun demo. This, we should have called this episode Superman. Yeah, clearly we're talking <laughs> about. We should, hang on, I can still get a spit curl out of this. Hang on. Oh God! Do you want me to go get my uh, Mafex Superman out of the closet? I bought the Superman <laughs> Hush. So, Yo, I but, mean, but please do, please do, Jeff. I just actually, I just want to see you stand up again. We're, we're going to speed run oh. the N64 Superman game. So follow us over to Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. We're going to fly through so many rings. We're going to do it. Okay, I'm going to vomit. <laughs> but but, but as far as so Super, much. I mean, we're we're talking about the you know the, the writing in Super in Superman movies. We could say the same thing about any other superhero, right? especially in the MCU. Now they have kind of switched to B list, C list characters as their like main event movies. And we've seen a big decline, right? In in box office revenue and fan interest. Like Jeff, I know you cover the toy aisles on your channel. You go to the toy aisles and there's, they're warming the pegs. I go to the toy aisles and I see clearance. Like I've never seen before. Right. Dude, Have you seen what Ollie's just got? We we don't have Ollie's where I'm at, but I see it on YouTube. Ollie's is, the shelves are packed. <laughs> I'll be returning back east, so I'll be back in Ollie's and all my stores making those toy videos because it's worse than ever. Like, yeah, what? Never has this ever happened with some of these like big iconic toy lines. They sell before they ever get to the clearance racks, but right, like Eternals. <laughs> um, oh, I, I, the yeah, line I, that'll I, never sell. Yeah, never. I, I guess that, like we, I, I guess we should kind of shift away just just from Superman, but. You know, honestly, I don't think in in the modern day, right? Not since the Christopher Reeve stuff has, has that character been been given a fair shake. Um, I would just like to see what what Jurgens and Tomasi could do, as far as a as far as a, a you know a, a screenplay for a Superman movie. I'd like to to see what what those two could come up with. Um, but you know, that's it's a dream of mine. May never happen. I w- I want the classic suit. I will. I will support any movie that has the nerve to put him in the classic suit with the red trunks and the yellow belt. None of this blue onesie and a yeah. cape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring, bring back the underwear. It's 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 iconic to the character. Um, he needs it. Or in my opinion, he he needs it. Um, the the seventeen um, teenagers that are actually reading DC comics right now, they may disagree. Uh, the version that they're seeing is 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 you know different from mine, but you know whatever. But yeah, I could I could go an entire show just talking about soups. So I'll have to have you, you almost, on the channel. We'll do a whole Superman show. Mm. There you go. <laughs> um, Appreciate the invite. Thank you. <laughs> but we're seeing massive layoffs at Disney, right? We're seeing uh, we're hearing about budgets being cut for movies. Their Disney Plus TV shows in, in the Marvel universe things are getting pushed back. It seems like a steady decline. Do you think that's audience burnout, or do you think it's bad writing? Do you think it's characters the audience doesn't care about getting their own shows, movies? I, what do you I think, think the main culprit is? 
I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think that there's a definite audience burnout. Um, it's like people like I'm, I'm willing to guarantee all four of us have been part of the MCU since Iron Man dropped that first day. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah. And that's a it's it was 11 years from Iron Man to Endgame. And that's 11 years of our lives going to midnight premieres and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's a lot of investment. So for a lot of us, myself included, Endgame was that was it. Like I watched the two fall on Spider-Man movies. That was it. Uh, I think I watched Moon Knight, which shit the bed after the first episode. <laughs> you um, talk about a letdown. That first episode was a banger, man. Shit's Ugh. kiss. No. When you see Moon Knight, they just like just haymakers on this fucking dude. Yeah, and no. then you just it shits the bed. Mm-hmm. The next episode, you're like, okay, I'm done. But, it hit every MCU trope, with, including the big monster fight at the end, mm-hmm. right? It, it's just like. And Wonder Woman from Wish. Um, <laughs> But, um, so I think it's audience burnout. It's the money that it takes to make. So they're not seeing the returns. They can't put enough money into them to make them good. And I think it's being engineered. I think they're intentionally making them worse. So that way they can blame the audience and be like, oh, well, they don't get it. Or the audience doesn't, you know, like, like a lot of Hollywood things. Like we see it a lot. They put people in movies and and they kind of hide behind them. Like they use literal people to block themselves from criticism and when people don't go see it they're like well it's the audience it's the the man babies on the internet that are not buying the tickets and so i think intentionally so they can kind of stop doing these movies these big movies aren't getting the returns what what go ahead finish your thought that way they can be like well the the audience just wasn't showing up for it anymore it's it's your fault really because they want to make other things um, yeah, so when, so I I think we're we're getting into that like engineered outrage that was kind of around uh, mm-hmm. the the Ghostbusters uh, all, right. all female right version right. Um, I don't know how engineered that was, man. That was the first topic that I wrote and the channel grew because it was like <laughs> everyone hated that movie and still does because it's just a bad pointless comedy. At the end of the day, that's my take. It doesn't need to exist. What does it add to the conversation? Thanks for playing. No, thank you. Right. So I, I should have been more specific about what I was saying, Jeff. I, I think that it was uh, the the misogyny angle of why people weren't going to see it. Oh, was, was my bad. Very Sorry. Much, yeah. <laughs> I got triggered. It yeah, was, was very much engineered. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, got triggered exactly. real quick. Um, I just want to say, Sal, you, you mentioned um, them blaming the audience and, and calling mm-hmm. the audience man babies. When Hollywood uses the phrase man babies to me, that means people with taste people with standards that's what that means Mm -hmm. people that won't just put their face in your dog dish and eat whatever you serve them right right like we want something better this is not good right and that and it's it's just one of those things where it's like 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 you said people who have taste it's it's them automatically putting us on the back foot and having to defend our taste and like what we like and all that kind of stuff and without it, how, do, how do I put it? It's like once you open a can of worms and you start using buzzwords on people, they're automatically on the back foot having to defend themselves and play catch up. Right. And, that, uh, and it's, it's easy. It's super easy. Like we, we see it all like, who, who was it when Reva was in, uh, uh, no, Obi-Wan. whatever, that that thing. Like uh, the first headlines were about like, oh, all the coaching I got, all the things I got about what was going to happen online. It's like, but none of that happened. And she wasn't even the worst part of the show. Obi Wan no. was, yeah, because he was written Darth completely was. wrong, <laughs> way off character. Right, yeah. he's a meat packer on Tatooine. It's yeah. Exactly <laughs> what you want to see Obi Wan be. Yeah, the best thing to come out of that was when someone took the soup, uh, the Step Brothers audio of being buried in the backyard and superimposed it over the fight with him invaders. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm burying you. <laughs> like that was the I best thing to come from that. <laughs> Put your balls on my drum set. Um, <laughs> well, my job's yeah. a guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> I was so enthusiastic, you know, up until like 2018. Um, and I'm actually, I like Endgame, right? I thought Endgame was great. Um, aside from the one like totally forced cringe scene when all the female characters get together at one time and it's like, felt so unnatural. It just, it was like, <sighs> Dude. I, I just saw like seven people sitting in the writer's room like oh we got to do this this will be so cool slay it was just like my, my thing was is like know. there's this 
colossal battle going on, and you're like, let's all stop and do this. And right. then, yeah, people are just getting fucking pummeled in the background. Like, it's like so, when Tony when Tony Stark said in um, what was it? Was it Infinity War? He's like, we're, we can sit around here and pose our asses off or whatever. When they yeah. were like, you know, Hawkeye had the arrow on Loki, and they were all standing around him, and mm-hmm. he joked about that. But then yep. later on, like all the all the female characters do that, and it's like they don't make fun of it, and so it just doesn't work. It just felt unnatural. Yeah. So, uh, so my my wife was uh, extremely enthusiastic about the MCU as well, having no background in, in comic books or any of that whatsoever. So, I thought it was really interesting when she starts talking about you know Falcon and calling him Sam and stuff. Uh, and I was like, hey, that that's really awesome because that's like a that's like a touchstone for for the two of us, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's also completely uninitiated as far as anything having to do with culture war. Um, and, and, and pop culture and all that. And then I remember when we saw that movie and then that scene came where everything stops and it was just like women in power poses. And then I could feel someone staring at me and I looked over and it's her. And she's like, huh? yeah, dude, <laughs> you know, same I, experience. she's like doing that. Yeah. You know, because she, well, and, and she, and we talked about it afterwards. Like every time we watch a movie, we talk about it on the way home. And she's like, look, she was like, look, I'm not fucking stupid. I know what I'm being pandered to, and it's insulting. Yeah, um, it, you know, exactly. and so it, it like, so this is a person, like I said, uninitiated with anything culture war, uh, re, re, you know, it, at all, as far as like, you know, pop culture or anything. And she's calling it out, but she's the target demographic that that stupid fucking scene was intended for, you know? <laughs> so you talk about a, a, a misstep. And I, um, I don't know about you guys, but I had no problem with any of the character individual characters in that scene. Well, no. Captain Marvel was kind of that. Movie She's sucked. as bad as everyone says. Like, I'm yeah. I've made a bunch of those videos and re- had a lot of reach. That character just blows. But I'm with you. The other women are great. I mean, yeah. Uh, Pe- I saw Pepper Black Widow as soon as it and, came out. Yep. Yeah, um, Pepper and Wasp and and uh, Black Widow. Well, no, Black Widow was dead. So um, uh, anyway, they were so, all fine individually. Then that. They came together and it was like, what is this? Yeah. Right. So there, there's something I'm reading what Jeff McAvoy is saying in the chat, um, which is going to tie into Mario really quick. But he's like, women can have a scene. Little girls needed that, not us. We have had that. If we want our passion and interest to grow rather than be thrown back in the basement, we need to let things that might be okay with cultural speaking happen. This isn't just for us anymore. It's for everybody. But the movies have sucked. So it's no sense. No way home. Which yeah i understand like that like i said it's a mass market now but i've always stood true to the phrase dance with the one that brought you these movies wouldn't exist without people like us and we're the ones that will continue watching and we haven't continued watching because this is the path that's gone down now he says little girls needed that that's uh sure if that's what you want to say little girls need people like peach in the mario movie that's who they need not people like Captain Marvel or these people that they can never aspire to be because they have superpowers. Like Peach in the Mario movie is Chef's Kiss, amazing. Like I mean, that's, uh, that's a here, good character. Here's someone that that was um, directed at pandering to Melinda. That scene was overt pandering. It was stupid. Right, right, and 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 I think that uh, anyone, uh, any female with a, a minimum double digit IQ uh could could see that right um but i think that they think that we're stupid um or 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 something that's i mean that's you know if you run it past occam's razor that's got to be the the simplest solution to that is that Mm -hmm. they think that we're dumb right i also i also don't see like little girls not liking the mcu at all and then seeing that scene somehow and saying oh i love it now right yeah Yeah, this this turned the tide (laughs) well i'm i'm with you like I get a lot of those kind of comments on our videos and stuff. And in theory, it's great. You want to have more people involved with stuff. But I use the example, look at Star Wars. Just use Star Wars as the example. They tried to make it appeal to women, appeal to little girls, appeal to this, appeal to that. There's the one part everyone forgets. These movies make billions of dollars. Women see them already. Girls see them already. Like, you're changing it to the point where it's like nobody wants to see what you're seeing. Because at the end of the day, like I said, Star Wars is one of the most seen movies on the planet. Go right. look at pictures of people going to see it in the 70s. Men and women and kids and adults. It was a cultural touchstone. People like this stuff. If Melinda, the chat's the Melinda, I think it is. She it likes is. this stuff. 
all the time and has liked it since it came out. So there is a huge audience for that. And somebody like her has stuck with it forever. I've seen the pictures of cosplay. I've seen the costumes. I've seen the videos on the Princess Leia figure and the Princess Leia that, all that stuff. That's fandom for forever ago. And you don't need that kind of stuff to pander to the next generation. Because the next generation is not even interested in this crap. You're just taking, like I look at it from a business standpoint. This audience likes this product. This audience doesn't. Well, this audience is kind of small and this audience keeps growing this way if we do it this way. But they focus on the, the few people that aren't watching. It's like if you get 100 compliments in a row and one negative one and then 100 more and you only focus on that one negative one. These studios focus on this little bitty thing that they're trying to fix. And it's like really even out of studios place to get involved in half the crap they're trying to. It's right. beyond money. It and, and Jeff, I, I think you bring up a really good point, specifically talking about Star Wars, right? Because like Leia was one of my favorite characters when, when I was a kid. Same. Um, and you know, and she comes out the gate, and she's already she's already blasting at stormtroopers like within the first ten minutes of the movie, right? Um, yeah. And then you know, not we, even. We, we, yeah, yeah, not even, right? And then we see her, um, you know, infiltrating, you know, uh, J Jabba's palace later to to come save Han, right? But we knew that she had grown up in the rebellion, so I mean that's that's par for the curse or par for the course for her is blasting on on stormtroopers, right? Yeah. But she never needed a girls get it done moment where she's like looks at the camera, she's like, Ugh. you know well, what I mean? Like dude, it's every everyone loved Leia, everyone yeah. you, universally. You didn't have to, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead Jeff. I was gonna say Princess Leia is the prime example of that because it's like she's as cool as the guys. And here's another thing too, at, like the, you brought the job of the hut scene. Han Solo might be considered the coolest Star Wars character, but the one thing he couldn't get away from was Jabba the Hutt. He could get away from Darth Vader at some point, times the Empire, yeah. but the one thing that always beat him was Jabba the Hutt, and who beat him? Princess Leia. So it's like they've always scaled it, but today, instead of focusing on what the character achieves, they focus, she had to wear a gold bikini, and that's demeaning. She's been captured by a slug creature it who was going to demean her. What the hell are you watching? She was it's being, not a sunshine and rainbow story. Yeah, she was being subjugated. It was supposed to be gross. And you know she I mean? literally like, used was, she literally used her chains of slavery right. to fill her in slaver. Yeah, exactly. And it was awesome. <laughs> but to, but today that and the thing is like that's a real scene. That's cool. That's awesome. That actually shows a character getting shit done, not standing around saying, "Come on, let's do it together." Like, <laughs> I think that reflects poorly on society. And instead of like, I don't know, just make something that people want to watch. We talked about Superman being aspirational. Make more characters that people go, "That character's cool. I want to be like that." You don't have yeah. to be Rambo. You can be somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, we we could talk all night about why superhero movies are declining. The fact is, they are. Right. We see it in the numbers in the box office receipts. Sal, you compiled a lot of information. Don't really have time to get to it all, but you can see a steady decline in MCU and DC superhero movies over the past three to four years. Even longer, really. I mean, aside from Endgame and, and Spider-Man um, yeah. No Way Home. So to be clear, the, the numbers I compiled started post-Endgame because that's right when right. we got into 2020 and all that shit kicked off. So that's kind of shows from there which was like the peak of the mountain and just it's a gradual decline some of it's and, a sharp you know, pop off but listen people can blame the pandemic but there were super successful movies during the pandemic mm -hmm. right like top gun mm -hmm. spider-man right? made a billion dollars before top gun came out and that was yeah. spider-man pandemic yeah. right joker so, made a lot of money too joker made a billion dollars and it was um, super profitable nobody ever talks about joker actually making that much money it made more at the box office than the rise of skywalker and it cost like they estimated that movie cost up to 400 million dollars now joker cost 64 million yeah. even if you double that your profit margin's astronomical warner brothers is laughing to the bank disney sinks so much money into their properties to make so little back and now they don't make any money back ant-man is a flop captain marvel yeah. 2 that movie's going to flop. And it's not oh. because of sexists on the internet. It's because it's a shit movie and no one likes the character. And only people with a, or I'll say it like this, there's people on the internet with a certain viewpoint that want to push that viewpoint down everyone's throat. Those are the people that are excited <laughs> for the Marvels, but they're not going to go see the movie. They're going to get on Twitter, they're going to write stupid articles, and they're going to go online and cause a huge stink. But they're mm -hmm. not going to go support the movie that right. is going to be the one thing that they can do. Don't call people a sexist. You're not fighting a culture war on Twitter. Spend some damn money. Spend a dollar. <laughs> I'm ready for the Twitter articles that are like, you know, Captain Captain Marvel 2 isn't that great. But this is why that's a good thing, right? Like there's always there. 
<laughs> Buddy, I can't know? wait till this. Take that, man, coming. babies. <laughs> yeah, take that, you basement dweller. Um, <laughs> Bring it yeah. on. I'm going to make videos about that and laugh all the way to the bank. These people, they, they get great content for us. Like, I love it. I can... Bring me up, bring it on, bring a thousand of those stupid articles. I'll laugh every time. Right, right. And I think, you know, it, it, it kind of, I think Brie Larson has really tainted the, the well herself in real life as far as uh, people, people turning out to, to see movies that she's taking part in because she's a, uh, she's a very polarizing individual. Now, you know? now listen, I, I'm going to push a back a little bit. I'm going to push back a little bit because I can separate art from artists. Sure. Right. Right. Like I, I, I like other movies where there's actors who are total assholes. Right. right. But Captain Marvel just wasn't a good movie. Right. It yeah. was bad. Like she was not a likable character. Captain Marvel. But forget Brie Larson. Captain Marvel was not a likable character. A good a, a hero doesn't crush someone's hand, right? Steal all their stuff because they say, "Hey, why don't you smile?" or whatever he said. Right. The the, the biker dude. That's not a good person. I can't I mean, get behind that. That's gross. It's right? essentially what Schwarzenegger did in Terminator Two. Stole he's a robot. robot. He's a he's a he's a killer robot. He's not even human. And those you know guys I mean? tried to fucking put a cigar out on his chest. Okay, they yeah. escalated first. He kindly said, "I need you to close your boots and your motorcycle." And then what? They wanted to get in his face. They tried yeah. to hit him. They tried to stab him. They did stab him. They did hit him, and they did burn him. He yeah. only fought back, man. Captain Marvel. The guy looked at her the wrong way. Oh, you're a man. That was it. If the Terminator did that shit, then I'd be right with you. But even the Terminator learned why, what it meant to cry, and what it meant to not kill people. Captain Marvel learned nothing. A robot had more of a character arc than her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that was a, go ahead. What, what what I said what, was was a joke. Um, for, first of all, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, look, you know, you, so you got to sympathize with the bikers a little bit because this, you know, this this jacked Austrian dude uh, walks into your bar. Full on dicks out for Harambe, right? Um, so, <laughs> you know, are you you gonna let that stand when he starts Blade, demanding wait. your personal property? Yeah. K Dog says Blade was hated in all his roles. I like Blade. Blade in the first two movies. Do you mean like Wesley Snipes or the actual Blade films? Because I love Blade. Oh, they yeah. were great. Yeah. I like Wesley yeah. Slight Snipes too. He stuck it to the man. He had to do hard time for cheating his taxes, but mm -hmm. I like Wesley. <laughs> I like his movies. Yeah, I don't um, like taxes either. So. Yeah, okay, I don't well, how Mahershala Ali got cast as Blade, but we haven't heard hide nor hair about that movie. Oh, we <laughs> have from him. He doesn't like the direction that they're going in. Mm, shocker. Yeah. yeah, there's been a couple says Blade the that. character. Blade the character. I thought people liked Blade. I, I mean, I like Blade. He's cool. I think, I don't I, know. I think he might That's mean another... like, people I, in I, that movie, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, oh. I thought that the Wesley Snipes movie, were uh, they were just like universally liked. Uh, I, At I least could be wrong, one. though. Right. Oh, the Blade character, I mean, in role, not that he wasn't liked. Okay. Oh, Oh, he's right. just a douche. Okay. I hear what you're saying. Sometimes a likable asshole type of thing. Yeah, yeah but he's also kind of a... Any... He, right. He's also a bit of an anti-hero. He's a different type of character. Right. Is that what Captain Marvel is? Is no. she an anti-hero? I don't know. Well, what it she depends is, on... She... Mr. Hicks, please continue. Oh, I was going to say, it depends on uh, what version of it, because, like... She's she's not ever an anti-hero. It's just actually I lost my train of thought right as you said that. I'm sorry. Go on, man. Because I had no, something else. I was like, it's <laughs> so. Let me continue with what you were saying because what I was about to say, sir, is it depends on which version of her that that you get because she's been rebooted due to impopularity probably seven eight times now. Recently, uh, too. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going. Thank you. Right. So, it, dude, we're right here, man. You I mean, know, sometimes you have good taste in naming too, by the way. So, oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> you I didn't want to go. Just get after you, Jeff. I, I didn't want to go full G with his name, right? Because obviously, I'm I'm only going to have one child at my age, and if I miss the opportunity to name him after Jeffrey the giraffe from Toys R Us, right? I'm, I can't <laughs> forgive myself. But uh, we went ahead and went with Jeffrey and not Joffrey. You know. When I was a kid, I All used right. to walk into Toys R Us and be like, hey, this is my store. I'm even named after the giraffe. And they yeah, always laughed at that joke because <laughs> we were spending money. <laughs> so I, I think it's obvious. And like I said, the numbers show it. We are seeing a decline in the superhero genre. I don't, I'm not convinced it's totally dead. I think it could come back and could come back strong. We need to get some good writing in there. And we need, Agreed. We need to bring back A-list heroes. 
Yeah. Like, I, I the know X-Men. they killed off Iron Man. Uh, the X-Men, I know they killed off Iron Man. I think that was a good ending for, uh, for that. <clears throat> I think the MCU is over. I say restart the MCU as an animated universe. I'd watch that. That, that that's I think animation idea. works better for su- for superhero movies. It just works. You can do more. You can do more comic book stuff in an animated It'll be movie. more integrated, yeah. Like, hey, Spider-Verse, you're right. Spider-Verse is like the best looking movie I've ever seen in terms of like yeah. visual originality. I didn't even think it was the best Spider-Man movie, but I got it on disc. I'm going to get the next one if it looks as visually stunning, even if it's not the greatest story. It's just nice to sit right. down and mm-hmm. get lost in it. I remember, <laughs> I remember being at Star Wars Celebration when I first met you. And I was like, dude, I, I, I know you're not a fan of Miles, but you got to see Spider-Verse. It was actually really good. And you're like, you were right. I'll, I'll check it out. <laughs> I I'm glad you liked the recommendation. It. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't let you down. Um, but yeah, Hollywood goes through cycles, right? Something popular that Hollywood will grasp onto it and just do mm-hmm. it over and over and over again. We saw it with uh, Twilight, right? The vampire thing. Oh. They grasped onto it. They went with it. Back in the old days with the Westerns, spaghetti Westerns, they it, Westerns, 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 until that finally died out, right? Superhero movies, they're kind of they're kind of in a slump at least, if not dying out. But we're seeing something else happening, and that's the rise of the video game movie. Very true. Yeah. Very true. How about that those Sonic movies? I think both of them mm-hmm. are pretty damn good. I enjoyed both of them. Um, they weren't like the Citizen Kane of video game movies, but they were good, and they got mostly a positive reception from the fans, right? Yeah. <laughs> And then I mean, um, the, uh, all the all the hype right now. What's it around? It yeah, did, and deservedly. <laughs> yeah. So. Here we go. Uh, oh, such a good I movie, go get, man. Yeah, yeah. I want to go out and buy the new Mario toys. Like I think They're Sal good. sent me the video of Bowser. Mm-hmm. But yeah. like I'm, I was already on board for Bowser because I did pick up those figure arts Mario, like the entire line where you could get like the set and everything. But like. I want to get the the movie versions now because they we're all roughly in the same window of age. We all grew up with Super Mario when it first came out or slightly right after when it was in its early first generation. They finally did something that got it all like into one. And I'm going back to see it again on Sunday. This movie, oh man, it was the best movie experience I've had in a long time. And I loved John Wick and I loved all these other movies, but I don't know what it is. I just felt good watching Mario. Made me that's, happy. That's that's the intended response uh from from, I, from filmmaking is to to well, el- elicit a re- an emotional response from the audience uh, and yours was positive in nature i so. watch too much disney so i'm used to getting disappointed constantly it's like <laughs> oh ant-man <laughs> oh this yeah. one <laughs> well know. well yeah. good good on you sir for going to see it again um i i need to as well because i i, I too d- thoroughly enjoyed myself right and as far as the merchandise is concerned right the the, the figures and stuff get them right because look, I, I'm 40. I'm going on 41 pretty soon. The only thing that I had as a kid were those McDonald's uh, toys that came with the Happy Meal, right? With the mm-hmm. um, the, uh, the 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 Mario Cloud. with the suction cup. You know, you put them down yep. and it'd it pop up and and all that stuff. And now we have these, you know, articulated, very 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 um, you know good representations of these characters. So you know, go go get them. They're a lot of fun, man. Yep, there you go. I am. Twenty bucks. Because when I was younger, like, I wanted video game toys like you wouldn't believe. And the only thing mm-hmm. you could get was, like, a Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Link that you could order. Or you could find it. Like, I found it at a Target. But it, like, didn't move. Its legs didn't move. That's it. I had that toy. That was the yep. shit, like, 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get another one of those. I lost mine forever ago. But, yeah. yeah, that that was what's my, up. My, my brother and I used to do customs of uh, Final Fight. That was our that was like our big arcade cabinet game. Um, mm-hmm. and we, so we were doing customs from that. And so, yeah, toys associated with, with video games that have been lacking, right? Um, so it, 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 as far as the topic is concerned, right, uh, video games to film now, uh, Super Mario was an absolute banger, or the, the Mario movie was an absolute banger, right? So what's next on the horizon, though? Like, what what... What do you see happening next now that this has been a huge success, right? Are we going to do Samus? You know, are we going to see that? I, Could I we see Star Fox? I think we're definitely building to an NCU, a Nintendo Cinematic Universe. Mm-hmm. I like right, it. So? I like, I like it. those letters. I, I think probably the next in line 
if not a Mario sequel, will probably be Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong! Yeah. It will definitely be, in my opinion, a Mario sequel and then a Donkey Kong spinoff. Yeah. I think they're going to follow the uh, Despicable Me format to two Gru mm-hmm. movies, a Minions movie, right? Mm-hmm. And then a Gru movie. And I think they did a second Minions movie, maybe. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the like problem now, they basically. have, um, there, there's a there's so many Easter eggs in that movie, is that certain things already exist as video games in that in that realm like they can't do ice climbers because he's playing ice climbers so it's like so they exist in real life and there's a game um in mario well, i think, bedroom, I think they had obscure ring. video games referenced in the movie because no one's going to go see an ice climbers movie. right uh there's an r wing in his bedroom from star fox mm-hmm. so maybe they'll do star fox but it's like there's an r wing so that already exists in that universe but again it's one of those like i don't know they they talked about once upon a time, and I, I swear we'll leave the MCU. But there was a, a talk one once upon a time about making like a Star Wars MCU crossover, and they're like, oh, they can't because Tom Holland's like, I watched this really old movie called Empire Strikes Back. It's like, okay, it already exists as a movie in that universe, and it's just gonna be, it would already be dumb, but it'll be even more dumb if you have the reference and then you have a cross, like, yeah. You know, so certain things I think we won't see like Star Fox, um, unless it's just like a one-off like Star Fox movie, just not tethered to it at all. But things like Metroid and like Zelda cannot be comedies. Um, Metroid no. at its heart, like it doesn't seem like it now, but at its heart, Metroid is like a horror sci-fi game. Mm-hmm. It's um, alien. Yeah, it's it's aliens. It's I, don't get me wrong. I would love to see a Metroid movie. I really would. Um, Metroid's Metroid and Zelda are my two favorite video game franchises. With Super Metroid being my favorite game, but something game. like Zelda, I was talking to Tony Tone Def. Uh, Jeff knows who that is, and he and I are both of the agreement that Zelda needs to be a long format TV show. It can't be a movie. There's too many. There's too much to pack into ninety minutes or two hours. Like if you want to really do like dungeons and monsters and bosses and really flesh out the story, it it needs to be at least like a one maybe three season TV show um, or Lord of the Rings style movie that it's like nine right. hours of one story that they just stretch out, you know? Right. Right. It's but, gotta... but maybe more like Harry Potter. Cause I don't know if kids are going to sit through a three to four hour movie. Uh, fuck them. It's not for them. It's for me. God I don't, <laughs> no, I don't right. <laughs> no, hold on one thing. I don't think little, little kids are the Zelda demographic already because the games aren't for the five-year-olds. I know some people played Zelda at five and you're thinking, Oh, when it was the new thing, but like, that's why there's two different Zelda lines that are out. There's like handheld Zelda and more whatever, easier Zelda. And then there's, I don't think Zelda needs to be R rated or even PG 13, but like, no, it no. can't have the tone of a Zelda movie or the Mario right. movie. It just, it would suck. No. Yeah, it would it be. Would. That's and, how you get. Excuse me, princess. That's how you end up with that. Nobody. Game. But I give Nintendo credit. Nintendo is very self-aware. Even though they do yeah. shit that fans don't like, they know how to make money and they know where they stand. Like when you look back at uh, Wind Waker, and if American companies came out with like Wind Waker that style, and they're like, "We're gonna double down. The fans are gonna like it." Like Disney would make the audiences eat that version of Zelda forever. Nintendo realized shortly after the game came out that it wasn't going to make the money that the other ones did, and they started work on Twilight Princess, like, right away. Mm -hmm. And within two and a half years, there was a much more mature, realistic Zelda, and that thing sold out. You know, and then that's, they keep, they they know what they're doing. So I know they won't go the cartoon route with Zelda, but, like, if they're smart, they're going to tell one or two stories on film. Either A Link to the Past, or they're going to find a way to tell Ocarina of Time. You don't really want to create a Zelda movie that's like the greatest hits because there's like an established timeline unlike mario it's just like this happens that happens Eh, it's kind of irrelevant you just jump on shit but zelda has like a a story story and if they mess it up one time they'll kill interest in anything else yeah even then the 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 timeline for zelda is like three games and it splits off into three different timelines um and even then it's kind of wonky like the hyrule historia book tried to put them into a timeline but there's certain things in certain games that contradict all that with breath of the wild kind of takes those three times and like ties them into a knot at the bottom and now we have tears of the kingdom coming out um but I, what i worry about i really worry about this so speaking about toon link and wind waker they relegated him to handheld 
they had Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks that were both Toon Link, and that was on the DS or 3DS. Like they were relegated to handheld. Minish Cap, like those get relegated to handheld systems. The Switch has combined handheld and console. Like Nintendo killed 3DS. They're so, like, we're not doing this anymore. That's why you can't buy them. They don't make new games for it. And unfortunately, I think that we're only going to see sequels to Breath of the Wild now because they have this open world. They can't go back to non-open world. They can't because they've set that bar now and they're not going to keep remaking this open world thing. Well, so well, sequels. they went open world with Mario with, um, was it Mario Odyssey? Odyssey? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that I, open I, world though? Cause it's like, you have to go ish. to the spaceship to jump between ish. giant levels. Yeah. Yeah. Like Zelda has technically always been open world. Um, but you need items to progress. Like you have to go to certain dungeons in certain orders. Like you have to do certain ones in certain order, and then you can kind of do what you want after that in the first one. But it's Breath of the Wild really set that bar, um, or brought it into the modern age, I should say, because everything else was like top down, like Ocarina of Time. You can go where you want, but it's like, oh, I can't get past here without my horse, and I have to get my horse first. So it's technically open world, but it's kind of a, it's this weird hybrid of on rails versus open world. S but. Sal, will, will you do me a favor? Will you hum um, Epona's song, please? You want me to hum it? Yes, please. Why? <clears throat> because I want to hear it. You should sing it first, like Malin. First, put a pickle right. in your mouth. Right. Let me get a kazoo. Yeah, I, there I, we I go. Set up for something. Um, do do do. Yeah. Do, do, I, look, we, we could talk I have about one right here. If you want me. To <laughs> He has a kazoo. <laughs> Wait, will, you, will you will you kazoo? Will you do a kazoo version of Epona song? If, if I had one. There we go. There we go. There you go. I was say, I have a melodic oh, thing in my bedroom. I can get that. Absolute banger. But uh, <laughs> my album drops next week, guys. Download it on iTunes. <laughs> yeah, on iTunes. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, it's like you're a combination of Fergie and Jesus. <laughs> so, I watched it for the first time in a while this past weekend. So, my uh, my text tone when someone texts me, it's actually Navi saying, "Hey, listen." Hey, listen. That's um, what Dion's has for his wife because that he finds that annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we'll hang out and we're not like, hey, listen, listen, hey, hey. He's like, oh. <laughs> but, it, uh, it's like, uh, it, it, every time I go to Walmart and I go to like the, uh, the the gardening section and then I see like all the pots in there for stuff, I'm just like, one oh, day. You know, I just want to smash them some bitches, man. Um, you think if you did it and the, and the police came and you're like, I was just looking for rupees, they'd laugh and let you go? If I was a cop and you said that, I'd be like, fuck, get out of here, dude. I saw nothing. <laughs> just just go, sir. Go, sir, and God be with you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I, I, I want to get – we got a lot of Super Chats, so I'm sorry to cut you off. We got a lot of Super Chats, and um, I do want to go over a couple of box office numbers um, before we give some final thoughts and wrap this up. But uh, we got one from our friend Renato. Thank you, sir. Been looking forward to the stream. Much love to you all, bros. Hey, much love to you, Renato. Appreciate you. Thanks for joining Thank us, Renato. You. Thank you very much, Wrench Nato, uh, wrench -nato. Because, because Renato has a wrench that is Wrench Nato now. Uh, Johnny Number Cinco says the fad is over. I, it might be. Yeah. It might be at that two billion dollar box office level that it's been at. Okay, I won't go backwards. But when you asked all those questions about what you think could be the reasons for the superhero movies, I actually would have said everything you said. I think you hit all those points pretty great. You know, right on the head. Oh, cool. Um. Got one from Robert's Infinite Realms. Thank you, sir. Hey, guys. Good topic. Enjoying. Well, thank you, Robert. I'm glad you're enjoying. And we got one from our friend Sam. Sam Newsman. Uh, thank you, sir. Peaches is written in the same key with the same chord progression as Never Gonna Give You Up. So the modern Rickroll has broken the Billboard Hot 135 years later. Hashtag the more you know. Dude, and that's, that is, you talk about professional journalism, right? These are the things we need to know. Yeah, God bless you, Sam Newsman. God bless you. That you are slip you had was excellent, puppet. by the way. That well, I really mean, the best thing, yeah, the best thing about Peaches is it gave us this. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I'm gonna have a nightmare to that tonight. Said, I can't, I, man. I hope Articulated Ninja watches this. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Sam. We got one from Jeff McElwee. Thank you, sir. Not to disagree with the fellow Jeff. The first Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman movie slapped in the DCEU. I agree. Yeah, it's I forgot that movie. Keep, it's difficult to keep the ball rolling after a 10 year epic end game. The one thing you know, I'll say Jeff? about Wonder Woman is it was the same plot basically as the Captain America movie, only set in World War One instead of World War Two. A hundred percent. Yep. Fair. And I didn't I didn't I could have lived with that little twist at the end. That was so dumb. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, <little> twist. <laughs> I, I think, think the movie Red Skull was a go ahead. Okay, sorry. I was gonna say oh, it would have been better if she didn't fight Ares. <laughs> Honestly, if the movie would have ended with her just like her lesson was like the man's war and then whatever. It kind of made her, I don't know, a smarter, more elevated, evolved character. But throwing that action scene at the end just kind of made the movie fall apart for me. I thought it was stupid as shit. Yeah, that was almost like the MCU trope, the big monster fight at the end. Um, mm -hmm. And also, Red Skull was way better than Ares. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Hugo Weaving's got a great voice. I wish he would have yeah. come back. But, I mean, I, I did, I, Jeff, I agree with you. I, I did enjoy the first Wonder Woman. I saw it mm -hmm. twice in the theater. Um, our friend Jim over at Largo's Lair. Thank you, sir. You don't pull on, you don't pull <laughs> on Superman's cape. <laughs> it's past time to retire the soups for a while. Need better writers and creativity in filmmaking. Retire it if they can't get it right. Now, I know James Gunn is working on something. Mm -hmm. God, I hope he gets it right. But my confidence is very low. Same. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate you. I like that it's Jim writing about a song. You don't mess with Jim, so <laughs> yeah, that a Jim. Mm -hmm. uh, we got one from Tony Robles. Thank you, sir. The box office does not equal quality of the movie. I agree. Mm -hmm. I still fight for Dread 2012. Excellent movie. Yes, it's the best Dread... Judge Dread movie ever. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to hear a deep dive on Judge Dread and Dread. Then go to the Endless Bullets podcast of Matt Swafford, and he and I mm. spend about three hours talking about Judge Dread and Dread. And I I will die on the hill that Dread was an amazing movie. It was really good. I missed good. that. I got to go watch that one. I didn't know you did I that. I saw it in 3D. That. It was awesome. Oh, cool. Ryan, you're talking about the Endless Bullets uh, installment, right? I've seen Dread. Okay. Excellent movie. Yeah. I missed the Endless Bullets episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll have to check that out. Um, and then we got some uh, Motivation Wednesdays from Sam Newsman. Stan Lee was 40 when he created Spider-Man. That should encourage many creators out there to keep creating and your imagination dreams alive. 100%. I like this guy. Just yep. thinking about Stan. <laughs> Thank oh, you, God. Sam. Thanks, Bree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got Shockwave75. Thank you, sir, for the super chat. I heard something great once. Girls may want to date Batman, but they want to marry Superman. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I mean, Superman. Well, I don't know. Bruce Wayne can provide. He's a provider. Yeah, he's got that bankroll. <laughs> yeah, but Superman could literally do anything. Like if he right. if he really wanted to give his woman the world, he could just figure out where there's a shitload of gold underneath the planet. He could mine it himself, melt it down, and sell it. Five minutes, Superman's a billionaire. <clears throat> or or crush just diamonds he, in his yeah. Or just take over any nation he wanted to and declare himself the. The, the the leader you know, that's why like, i shouldn't you... be a superhero because i would yeah. be like a benevolent leader but man i would like take yeah. over an island like this is my island and don't send anything because i'll destroy it but all the people will be safe if you just give that's it to why me clark kent the is superman and the other guys general zod yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true thank you shockwave appreciate you uh v-dub matt thank you for the super chat how about some period correct superhero movies? Set the films back in the 1930s and 40s Dude. when they first made their first debut. Thoughts? They kind of did that animated style with uh, Justice League uh, New Frontier. Frontier? Yeah, New Frontier. New Frontier. Yeah. yeah, New Frontier. That's a good story, too. That was pretty good. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I would be down for that. Yes, but they can't give me Super or Batman with the little purple gloves. Like, you got to figure out a design for Batman that could be period appropriate but look like more of a a revolved or evolved refined Batman because like I'm all for it but not the original Batman design with that shitty cowl and the fucking weird cape no I bought those action figures from DC Direct they suck it's a terrible design uh, Bob Kane agreed I'm yep. sorry I I'm just mad at Bob Kane in general <laughs> or wait, don't wait, go with the... Bob Kane's original design either oof that's no. bad yeah or was that Bill 
Finger's design. No. No, no. We, don't, we don't speak ill of Bill Finger around these parts. Bob Kane, <laughs> Bill Finger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, B-Dub, Matt. Sam Newsman with another super chat. Thank you, sir. Superman's greatest moment was his death from Doomsday. Dude, that come on. Prove me wrong. That was... Dude. So we t- people talk about like their era of Superman. That Superman was dead when I was a kid. You had like Superboy mm-hmm. and Steel when I was reading. Like one of my first comics, which Bobby can prove because he has my comic, has my name in it. Like this, pro- my mom did the whole wrote the name in the comic thing. It was a death of Superman, and mm-hmm. I grew up with Steel. That's why like Steel, like that's Superman to me. Like I like oh. Steel. I mean, Steel's fine, but he, he never claimed he was Superman. Like. Eradicator did. It's me. Damn it. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. Yeah, well, you got your dream movie in 1997. I will. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll go watch my Superman Steel movie and I'll eat my tacos with my head kicked to the side because I have that taco neck syndrome. If you remember that commercial, <laughs> yeah. uh, we got a uh, chat from Smith the Crow. He says, Frick. Brie Larson recently said, just admit you hate women and leave, or something like that, in regards to the Marvels. Oh, um, look, they should not allow their actors to talk like this in public. That's just bad for their box office. People will see stuff like that, and then they won't go see the movie, and they'll lose that money. They That's should just shut up. Precisely what I was saying about her earlier, Ryan, is that she's right. She's, it's, uh, she's intentionally d- divisive, and I don't know I, I why. Agree. But... I'm just saying for me, I can separate that if the movie's good. I'll I'll go see it, but I just yeah, sure. I mean, I I I know the political affiliations of Pearl Jam, right? And I'll you know, but I I still like Pearl Jam. You know, like I I get it. <laughs> okay. Ma- mature individuals can do that, right? But right. Uh, you know, it, anyway, let's, let, let's now, move hold on real that. quick though. That actually wasn't Brie Larson that said that. That was a Rolling Stone article that was quoted. That it's either ro- it's a it's a publication. She didn't say that. So okay. I'm not here to defend her ever. But see see what's going on though is it's not this guy's problem. It's the fact that she's already this unlikable person quoted for saying all these terrible things. So people, you know, it's like she said this. Of course she said it because she said the other things. But this is the press making this excuse. The the press is the bigger culprit than Brie Larson because she represents what they need to defend. And so. I know it sounds okay. way more deep than it should be, but like, that's just, I just wanted to say that is actually the press that's saying that about her. Okay. And real quick, this is just weird thing connecting. One, Jeremy, I love Pearl Jam. Still mm-hmm. love Pearl Jam. I've seen them three times, and believe it or not, mm-hmm. Jeff and I were actually at the same Pearl Jam concert in yep. 2014, I think it was. 2013. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, I left early because they wouldn't stop playing. That was a long ass show. Yeah. They, <laughs> they play like three hours. Like they don't stop. They are um, a fantastic jam band live, right? Would anyone like to hear me sing uh Yellow Leadbetter live? <laughs> okay. We got to All right, you, you can come back. Just don't ever suggest that again. Could you um, sing your own namesake? That's a great song. <laughs> Transporter hmm. Room 8 or Transporter 8. Thank you for the super chat. When you have executive producers like Nate more who doesn't hire anyone who has any kind of know-how about the character it is a first grade down i i agree with that i don't know who that is i don't know who nate moore is but i agree with the sentiment if you if your directive is you're not allowed to know about the character that's kind of stupid right yeah mm-hmm. okay thank that's, you for the super chat I don't know about henry cavill and his spot in the witcher why he's not the witcher anymore because so. he didn't like the way the story was going, right? Mm-hmm. He kept like, cor- uh, according to like interviews, he kept nitpicking and correcting things that the directors and producers wanted to do, and they're like, "We're done. We can't deal with this." Gotcha. Like, oh, gotcha. Heaven forbid. Uh, action figure Atorium. That's Mark Major. He's the one that will anoint you as a toy guru. Oh yeah, um, yeah. He says they want to remake the Black Hole as a woke film, but we all know Hole has always been black. <laughs> that's funny i get it i get it thank you mark <laughs> we got one from ammo to go thank you for the super chat you know the drill catch the rest of the replay later and i hope you guys have jeff on more often i would like to have jeff on more often just yeah. call me up honestly i got so excited i was like holy shit i get to talk about toys <laughs> yeah hey well I, you mentioned before the show you want to do another collector stream which we did a few years ago mm-hmm. that's how ryan and i met Yep, I'm ready to oh, go. Oh, really? Cool. 
All right. Uh, let it. me get my move on, get back west or back east, and then we'll uh, I'll pick a date. Right on. Thank you, Amma, to awesome. go. Appreciate you, man. Uh, Scott Hughes, our buddy Scott. I hope you're recovering well, my friend. Mm-hmm. He says the MCU could come back if they got good writers without political agendas and just focus on entertainment. Then focus on the Secret Wars storyline. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That way they have a way to use Iron Man and Captain America. Now, look, we here on the 3POA podcast YouTube channel, we don't talk politics. But I mm-hmm. totally get your point, Scott, and I agree mm-hmm. with you. That that being said, like I, I understand, like there, that's always been a part of storytelling, like reflecting modern times and stuff. But it was always more subtle. Like you really had to dig to kind of get the parallels. But now it's just like, like it's yeah. Well, so so it it uh, Sal, if I can expand on that a little bit, it it always w- was, or I was of the opinion that the story itself, like was was a vehicle to maybe tell. Or you know, kind of get into the 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 politics of the day, right? Mm-hmm. But the politics of the day was not the star of the show, right? right? Which is what it seems to to be now, with you know a compelling story, you know, being a uh, you know being a second thought essentially. I agree with that. Um, they had it better in the '80s. You could tell a story about the AIDS crisis and the X Men, but not right. really know what you're hearing a story about. So yeah, mm-hmm. great point. <laughs> uh we got one from uh john papa sergio what's up john thank you so much if you want to fix it you need less activists making movies and more people with passion for storytelling and filmmaking story first always activism mm-hmm. like dead last mm-hmm. put your story first um i agree thank you john okay we are all caught up on supers appreciate you all so i do want to say um just looking at the MCU, the last MCU movie to come out was Ant Man and the Wasp. Quite with a budget of two hundred million. I went and saw it with my thirteen year old son. We walked out and he's like, I hate that movie. <laughs> the, first, the first time he's ever told me on the way out of a theater that he hated a movie. He's like, That movie was horrible. I'm like, <laughs> I'm doing something right. Um, it was a horrible yeah, movie. You are. I, I, I've met him before. We've all sat down and had lunch and went toy hunting together, right? He's a very well mannered young man, right? So for him to levy, you know that that type of accusation at a, at a at a feature film, it must it must have been warranted, you know. He says he still hates it. <laughs> still hate it. Um, but it had a budget of two hundred million. Box office four hundred seventy four million. Well, that means they profited two hundred seventy four million. Wait. Jeff, you want to break down that number? So, folks, the quick and loose number is you do 2.5 times the budget to find the break-even point, which means there's no money made, no money lost. But Ant-Man, when you do the numbers and the math, it doesn't equal that. So Ant-Man has lost money, and it'll be on Disney Plus in a couple of days. The toy line has not dropped, and it was weird. I guess apparently the delay pushed the toy line back. So the only Marvel movie to never have a toy line on shelves with it is Ant-Man. It's a flop. It's hated. And it's going to have, I guarantee you, you will see Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, and all the Ant-Man movie figures on shelves well into the fall. Those things are going to stick around. Oh, you'll see see the Wasp for years to come. (laughs) It's going to be like the Sandlot forever. (laughs) It's the... uh... Oh, uh, what, what, Obsidian? Call Obsidian Wave? Is there anything to go off of? She'll be oh. on shelves for a while. Yeah. Was that Absolutely. the Misty Knight figure wave? Or Because mm. Misty Knight was on shelves for like three years. That yeah. one Misty, that came out. Misty might still be on the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, at my local Target somewhere, there is a Misty Knight just chilling with her one robotic arm. I feel bad for her. She's not that bad of a character. She's not that good uh, of a figure, but you know. Yeah, no, I don't think Misty Knight's a bad character at all. Just that figure was trash. Um... And then our, our, our last DCEU movie, Black Adam, with Jeff's favorite actor, The Rock. And it came out on my birthday, too. So I'm thinking, like, yeah, The Rock. It's the second Rock movie that came out on my birthday. The first being Doom, which is absolute shit. And mm. now we got Black Adam, man. 
If you want to talk the about only... a video game to film adaptation, right? Yes, yeah. of a generation, my friend. Of a entire generation. <laughs> the adaptation of a generation. Yeah. I like the way you think there. That's, that's great. The only, the only positive thing I can say about Black Adam is the fact that somewhere there will be Black Adam figures on clearance. And what I can do is I want to get the hot toy and customize it and turn it into the rock. Because the rock figures don't look much like the rock, but the Black Adam figures all look dead on him. So yeah, I get that get some... SH figure arts. Get that SH figure arts. Uh, Black Adam, throw that head on the SH figure arts. The Rock, yeah. and you might have a yeah. good Rock figure. Yeah, because yeah. well, <laughs> that gonna... SH figure arts Rock is dog crap. Yeah, well, um, as we all know, Todd McFarlane figures are usually on the pegs for roughly seventeen and a half minutes before they do go on clearance. Right. So <laughs> right, you've got, you got a pretty money? good shot there. <laughs> I I just always see the stuff on clearance or super cheap. I don't even right. see those things holding on to tons of value. But that could just be me. I only have a handful of them. It it, it, it may be just me keeping Toddy Mac afloat at this point, honestly. <laughs> I think so. Because... Yeah. You know what? I got to have you on a stream. One of my guys that I stream with used to work at McFarland Toys and has tons of Todd McFarland stories. He was a, an art director there for a while. So Who who is that? Vinny Tartamella. He's got his oh, own channel, Vinny Art. I know who Vinny yeah. Tartamella is, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know him, but I, I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy, did you ever get your uh, your Solomon Grundy wave from McFarland? Did that ever ship to you? I did. Yeah, it's done okay. and on display. Yeah, done and on display. Sweet. Uh, minus uh, <laughs> minus uh, Rachel Ghoul because I hate that figure. I think I actually throw it or threw it away. Um, but yeah, that figure's it's bad. So should have kept it for uh, some target practice. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Uh, anyway, Black Adam with a budget of two hundred sixty million, raked in at the box office three hundred and ninety three. So if we know it's two point five, the budget to make to start to break even, Black Adam needed five hundred and twenty million, but it only made three hundred ninety three. I'd call that a flop. It is. Now <laughs> it's the quality of the film. That's why it flopped, man. The Rock can only polish a turd so much. That's right. Now, the Super Mario Brothers movie, with a budget of $100 million and having only been in theaters for two weeks, two and a half weeks, the box office so far, $700 million. And I think I heard today it's actually getting closer to $900 million. Right. Thank these, God. These numbers are a few days old. $100 million budget, $900 million box office so far. It's a billion-dollar movie within the first month. I don't that, know if that's... I can do the math. Did it do it right? No, I'm joking. That's a huge <laughs> hit. That's a huge... Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody... Yeah. And did you guys notice all the people trying to tear down the Mario movie right before it came out? Like, the critics were dumping on it for it being bad, and then you had this really weird contingent of people trying to say it's woke and all this stuff. It's like, the Mario movie is this movie that shows you what you need to make to get everyone to go see it. That yeah, Top right. Gun, Avatar... Ugh, I hated Avatar, but still, it made all that money. Like... <laughs> There's certain things they're doing to get a lot of people in the theater. And if they're smart, nope. they make movies like that. If you're on YouTube and you're seeing a channel called Mario Woke, they're probably doing that to keep uh, their channel going. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that, yeah, that, that, that's a clickbaity yeah. uh, title yeah, for a video right there, point. man. I mean, yes, Princess Peach was a, uh, a, a, a very um, effective, powerful character in the movie, but it fits her character in the classic sense. I mean, Princess mm -hmm. Peach was a heavy player in Super Mario 2, mm -hmm, Mario yeah. Kart, all that. She's not just a helpless princess like she was in Super Mario 1. Princess Peach was not a woke character, in my opinion, at all. If there was something Never else been. people are saying that's woke right. in the Mario movie, I'm not seeing it. Mm -mm. Well, people are saying, like, oh, she outdoes Mario. And it's like, okay, like, she says in the movie, she's like, yeah. She's like, I grew up here. Like, yeah. Of course, yeah, I'm going to yeah. be better at, at this. Like, yeah, but Mario's the fish out of water in in, in that right. scenario, right? Like, she's a product of that environment, so why shouldn't? That's so stupid, man. Mm -hmm. um, so, Tony, we got our numbers from Deadline. Yeah. Just so he says Mario's currently at $678 million. I don't know if that's yeah. domestic only or foreign. And, uh, I don't know, but I'm going off Deadline here. Okay. Yeah, it was a few days ago, Deadline. Like, it was, like, at 690-something, and they're like, it's going to crack set like it, when they published the article was at 670 and then there was an update and it was like currently six nine something something like will you know will crack 700 by the end of tonight and this was a couple days ago either either way it's a huge hit right now although sonic was also a huge hit both sonic one and two um 
it wasn't like a runaway success like Mario. However, are we seeing a trend towards superhero or sorry, towards video game based movies? Certainly, I think the Nintendo movies are going to be kind of the next big thing. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if video game movies as a whole are going to take the place of the superhero movie, which took the place of other stuff, whatever right. it was. But um, are we going to see those trending up? And I think within the NCU, which we're assuming is going to exist, um, and I think it's a pretty good assumption, I think we will. It's the novelty of all that. That's why the Mario movie is making a lot of money. Yes, it's a good film. Yes, it appeals to kids and adults. But there's a novelty to good video game movies because... Again, we're roughly all the same age. We lived through the original Mario movie. We lived through the Resident Evil movies. We lived through Alone in the Dark and the Street Fighter. Look, in my opinion, up until Mario, there was one good video game movie, and that was Mortal Kombat. Everything else has just been a bad movie based on a video game. Mortal Kombat is a competent to good film, and I will still stand by that movie. I mean, Sal, I think you and I were on a stream with a guy who wanted to talk about it. I'm like, dude, it's got a hero's journey and everything going for it, and it's got a bitchin' soundtrack and great fight scenes. Mario is better in every way. I'm not going to act like Mortal Kombat (laughs) beats Mario, but to answer your question, man, I think they will trend up with with the novelty factor, and if they continue to be as good like I liked the Sonic movies quite a bit. I think the reason why it also worked is because that shitty design was changed and they the audience was happy with it. It looked great. Like Sonic, that's where like the movie sorry to go backwards, but like the movie like Power Rangers from 2017 or any movie based on things, if they don't make it look just like it's supposed to look. And I get oh artistic license. The audience doesn't want artistic license. They want the right. same thing that they like on screen. Mm-hmm. Mario Mario is perfect because It just turned the dial a bit. Mario and Luigi look slightly different. They look slightly animated. They look slightly like the things, but like Donkey Kong and Bowser and these other characters look dead on the game. And so all of those things rolled in together, I think will be, or that will equate success. And it's worth noting, there's been a ton of video game movie flops. Mm -hmm. uh, Not the least of which was uh, Uncharted. Yeah. What oh a God, I forgot horrible. that existed. Oh, <laughs> Dude, I'm right there. I forgot that that happened. And I love it's those always, games. Well, right. Uncharted was a few years too late. Like they modeled the character off of Nathan Fillion, and that was their chance to use him. And now he's a little, too he's old. old enough to be Sully now. Yeah. Um. But I don't know, man. Nathan Fillion and like Robert De Niro or something, or Bruce. Bruce Campbell should have played Sully, not uh, Mark Wahlberg. Even if you yeah. keep Tom Holland, you got to get like that older guy yeah. mark Wahlberg's just mark Wahlberg. what does that danny devito do it <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm seeing a lot of turds coming up it's not lip says doom that was bad um yeah resident evil the first one was good i think it but fell off a cliff after you, that you gotta Oof. remember too that there's been a lot of really bad superhero movies too a lot of really bad ones like we think of the mcu but we forget about things like uh ben affleck's daredevil which if you watch the director's cut is way better Agreed. way way better Electra. I turned Ghost that one Rider, off and never finished Spirit it. Spirit of Vengeance, Electra. Like there, there's the Fantastic Four. Fan yeah. Four stick is even worse than Fantastic yeah. Four from two thousand five. <sighs> yeah, like, you know, the Last um, Stand. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I lied. <laughs> I lied to myself and told myself that I liked it just because of how much I like the Silver Surfer. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. It's. It, but it's. Yeah. They're, they're oh, bad. you, you like Galactus as an amorphous cloud floating through space. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. So I don't want to go back to 2007. I'm having flashbacks. It was a. Yeah. I graduated was, from high school and watched shitty movies. Senior year was uh, not a good time for movies. No. Um, no. But um, talking about video games and all that. So there's the the stream is on my channel. It's called Video uh, Movie Video Game Movie, where we're talking about movies based off video games and video games based off movies. That was part of Iconicon this last year. If you want to watch that, Jeff's on it. Surge from. Uh, can't remember his channel's name, but he's on there, and Dante is on there. That okay. was a great stream. That yeah. was a lot of fun, folks. Check it out. Not trying to just add on to the plug, but seriously, if you enjoyed this show, you'll enjoy that one too. All right. Well, we will see what the future holds. We have mm-hmm. gone way over time. We need to wrap this up. I wish we could keep going. We could keep going easily for another hour. We we, um, we could. I I think that this topic right here deserves uh, a, a sequel at some point in time. Right. We need to pick this discussion. Back Maybe up we, or... could, we could do video game movies we want to see, and we Dude. could fan we could fan cast them and choose like the best director, 
right? Oh, yeah. It'd be a lot of fun. Can they be a dead director since we're fan yes. casting all this? Okay. Yeah, one hundred one hundred percent. like but, like for instance, Chalor wants to see a live action contra. Dude, so would I. Same these. Same these. Mm-hmm. Right? Cool. It'd have to be like cocaine fueled. I'm down. And it's yeah. worth noting the Last of Us series. I haven't watched it, but I'm hearing a lot of good things about Last of Us series, so maybe mm-hmm. like two series will go ahead. Not not to use that phrase, but to be fair, Last of Us had a good story already. Like they're just adapting it to film like the last of us game is already like an s tier story we need a grand theft auto series or movie M- most <laughs> m- most comic book you down m- most comic books like start off with a good story as well at some point How about time, a, uh, and then what was that mo- what was that game that was open world kind of like grand theft auto but you were like a super Saints Row? oh oh crackdown crackdown, crackdown. oh my crackdown. god what a great fun game that was oh Loved it. <laughs> Crackdown. I, I think I got it on Xbox still. Crackdown could be a, a an incredible Hulk game. Just take out the guns and just like mm-hmm. use the same physics and everything, but have it be well, Incredible Hulk. And you it was it. actually but, very very similar to that Incredible Hulk game that that came out. Right? That one wasn't as good though. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we we could we could save that for for the sequel as well. But um, I would say without yeah, we gotta a do doubt. This. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would say, w- without a doubt, this is the longest installment of Loose But Complete uh, to date. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're at an hour and 55. All right. That's it. Well, I'm used to streaming for four hours, believe me. I'm I know. Ready to go, but I'm just like, oh, this is nothing. This is like half topic and super chats on the high council. Jeez. <laughs> Rise of Skywalker stream was like seven hours long. <laughs> that was the that was our best stream ever. We were so drunk. We had like went to the store was, and prepped all yeah. day. I was moderating for seven hours, and I remember Don, uh, Don, I remember Dion ripping that big ass fart like halfway through. <laughs> when we meet, I'm gonna take you to lunch for being the mod, dude. I owe you one. <laughs> is that ketchup and onion? Ketchup and onion. On my tongue. <laughs> All right, Jeremy's yelling at me in the private chat. We got to end the stream. Uh, thank you guys so much, Jeff, Sal. Thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure. Links to man. both That's of your forever. channels in the description below. Anything else you guys want to mention before we wrap this up? Uh, two parting thoughts. Um, Mario, on its face in the movie, is not a complex story. It's very simple, but no one plays Mario for the story because the story is just step on Goombas and save the princess, pretty much. Um, but to my recollection in the movie, not once because spoilers, if you haven't seen it, spoilers leave now. Um, not once does Mario worry about getting home. Not once. All he worries about is saving his brother. He wants to, because no matter, as the movie says, like no matter where we are, as long as we're together, we'll be fine. And that's why the movie is called super Mario brothers. Yep. Um, love it. That's and my incidentally, thought. that's how I feel about you, Sal. So, <laughs> loose but um, hole. The loose but hole. Right. Jeff, anything? Uh, besides th- saying thanks for having me, because this has been way too much fun. Uh, folks, if you like what we do, check us out on World Class Bullshitters. Dropped a video today on The Mandalorian. We'll have a podcast tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Episode 353, I believe. So, yeah, join us. It'll nice. be a lot of fun. It is every week. Link to World Class Bullshitters in the description below. Uh, with that being said, guys, thanks so much. Thanks for all your super chats. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for hitting that like button on your way out. And we will see you all in a couple weeks. Bye. Bye.